That's good. It is going to go live in just a second. And there she goes. We're live. I gotta get to her first. Hold on. Move my chair. Hit refresh. There it is. Wait. Hold on. Where's the refresh button? There it is. Don't do that. Come on. Oh, she's live, boys. We are live. Hold on. My laptop's slow. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? It's right there. There you are. Uh, oops, I forgot the music. Loading, buffering. There we go. Why is there an ad? You turn the ads off. Oh, hey, there we are. Chat disconnected. Please wait while you try to reconnect. Excuse me? That's not good. <laughs> what the f <laughs> This is weird looking at me like a few seconds behind. I know. Post. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> oh, hey, Jack. Live chat. What? <laughs> Unable to connect. Dis to connect to chat. What? I don't know what's going on. Buddy, are you you? No, because I'm not signed in. I don't know my password. <laughs> All my buddies are watching us. Good. I don't know if they can hear us or not. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, people. Give us a sec. Alright, that's posted. Hey, you might have to sign into your... Uh... Okay, I on, can. On my laptop. Find out. No, let me use this one. Oh, Jesus Christ. Are you kidding me? Hold on! This is, this is how it always starts, though, so it's fine. My buddy Burroughs says it sounds good. Perfect. Thank you. Someone said thank you very much. Matt? Is that right? Is that right? Yep. I don't know what my password is. Uh, uh, so you guys are rookies. Yeah, I know they are. <laughs> Duh. You got a lot of things to click on. <laughs> All right, Sean. <laughs> you figured your, out? No, you're going to use your account. You can use mine too, I guess. People can hear you though, so don't oh, yeah. shout here. Hey, what's your social? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh wait, no, they can't see that. <laughs> no, no, no. Only us can see this. No, I know that. You want to type your social? Oh, your quick? friggin' number lock is off, you jack. Oh, was it? Yep. Oh, that's probably what the issue was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, you guys got a drink already because I stabbed myself before I got here. This is so wrong to be typing like this. Show a password? No. Oh, Andrew, can you grab my phone? This is like waiting for snow to show up to the boat ramp in the morning. Hey, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, you have the time he's got to wake my ass up, so. This is true. You had to do it before. I did. I almost <laughs> left your ass in bed. <laughs> it was like throwing <laughs> rocks at your window. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Why do you want? <laughs> were we hunting or fishing that morning? We were fishing, I, I think. think. we were fishing that morning. That was funny. I don't remember. All right, Andrew, you're, multiple you're in. Times. There we are. Yep. Are we? Yep, you're logged in on my account. There's an ad. Oh, God, the heaven, my knees hurt. Over here. 
Can I just like go? Just skip ads. Oh yeah, you're right. Our evening. Oh. All right, here we Everything's go. posted everywhere. Okay. Yeah, there's people right. in. We just can't see the chat yet. Yeah, we're just we're just taking our time doing this. <laughs> uh, where's the chat? I'll put up oh, there. there's the yeah. chat. Okay. You got it? We got it. Not time. Switching sides. What are you talking about? Switching sides. I don't get it. Switch sides. What do you mean? Oh yeah, yeah. We're switching sides. Me and Sean switch sides. I'm usually that side. I turned the heat down a few degrees because I'm already roasting to death. I don't That's know about you guys. I'm good, yeah. <laughs> All right. How's everybody doing tonight? Got everything sorted. Hopefully audio is good across the board. Let me know if it's an issue. Uh, we went back to the way we set it all up before in the first few streams. So, mic's a little bit further away. Might be a little echoey. Otherwise, I think it's pretty good. What do you got? Good, good messages saying we're good. Yep. Good. Yeah, usually Sweet. people are pretty good about messaging. Like, text me directly, even my wife. So she's yeah. come down a few times and like, rap, rap, rap. hey, it's really screwed up. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so we usually wait a few minutes to, before we really get rolling into it, give people a you know, few minutes to get in here. But we did all that. Well, I took a minute to post links to this throughout the whole live stream, uh, post on social and all that. So we're about to get started. Uh, before we do, if you could do me a favor, please, anybody that's watching, share the stream if you haven't. That it, It's seriously, like, you don't understand how helpful it is until you do it, like, one time. It, huge, huge difference. Um, aside from that, we're here to talk everything largemouth bass tonight with our special guest, Kyle. Slaunch yeah. Beast Crew from Instagram and Facebook. But go ahead and take a minute. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your fishing history. Uh, so I was born and raised in New Hampshire. Um, I come from Jersey blood, doing some saltwater fishing, crabbing as a kid. Um, um, my father took me out since I was three or four years old, bass fishing up here. Um, caught my first 10 pounder when I was 12 years old on a bait that my dad thought was ridiculous and the rest was history. <laughs> I, I haven't stopped. I, it's in Same my though. blood, it's a passion. <laughs> it was actually a crawfish, probably eight, inches long and it looked like octopus tentacles oh, and my what? dad was like what are you gonna catch on that thing the biggest fish and ever. his <laughs> my, my pop-up his father gave it to me in this big bag of plastics and i threw it out there and i still i can bring you to the rock i caught the fish on and That's uh awesome. whacked the five pounder and my dad was like damn and um yeah i've just i've loved everything fun hunting fishing in the outdoors since i was a kid and um you know i chase biggins i like to Take pictures, kiss them on the lips, and let them go. Yeah, you do like to kiss them on the lips. I do. <laughs> Every single one. <laughs> Ain't not a damn thing wrong with it. Nope. Andrew, why don't you take over for a minute? I'm just going to try and run an <clears throat> Ethernet cable to your laptop and see if that'll help out because I still see it's got a little bit of issues. All right. <clears throat> Where do you want to start? Do you want to do you want to give a jump right into what what you like to do or like where? Do you... As far as like ice out here in a couple weeks. Right. Oh yeah, we're. I mean, well. Kind of recap how we did last week, Andrew, before we really get started, so people kind of have an idea as to what the flow of the conversation is going to be like and how we're going to handle it, and then uh, we'll jump into it. We're going to start right with the ice fishing. We'll probably put a lot more emphasis on that. <laughs> well, normal New Hampshire rights are going ice fishing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm still doing that. We're not normal. <laughs> yeah, we, we went down to uh, the Cape this last weekend, and I got skunked. End of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta let Snover out fishing once in a while. I know, once in a while. The front of the boat's gotta have some, you know, some leverage once in a while. Yeah, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have got hit, but I'm not sure. I think I missed it. I almost hit him in the face, though, on the hook set. It's harder to catch fish in water that just doesn't lock up than it is when the lid comes off the lake. Right, because it's there. So, like, you guys are really driving into just a shit show. Oh, yeah. We definitely yeah. are, but you you're better off just water, waiting though. to the end of March, early April. You know that's that ice, that ice goes away and that sun penetrates, and it's an instant change up here. Oh, I know. But we we did have that that day last year, or was it last year? Two years ago, we went down to what was that little pond that we went down to? Uh, the pond that we shall not speak of. Yeah, this tiny place that we don't want to talk about. There'll be no spot block. We went there, and oh man, we hammered them, and it was I don't even remember the date. It was early. There was still ice up here. We were, I was ice fishing I think the next day or the yeah. day before then, and we hammered them down there. 
But I think we kind of got lucky on that one because it was just yeah, like, it's, I'm not saying it's not possible. No, it, it definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> I know for for yeah, up I here gonna... for sure it's that it's that sharp change. Yeah, the, that know, really just triggers everything. It definitely yeah. does. Refresh your browser and see if that helps. No, all right. Everything's good on our end. I just, with the exception of we're trying to keep the live stream live on the TV behind you guys so that we can keep up with the chat real time. That's the goal. But to expand on your point, you were absolutely right. It's it's a totally different animal when you have like that that sharp change, that sharp transition. And I mean, there's plenty of ponds um, like where I caught my previous PB and mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that kind of little mm -hmm. hole. <laughs> But man, that place was always like. Man, that was pre-spawn, correct? No, I was, that was in the fall. But so, so he caught a five and a quarter out of there in the pre-spawn. It's our second trip out for the year. Mm -hmm. But that's how like, that's how it typically is for us in New Hampshire when we hit these ponds one, two weeks after ice, and it's just like bang, bang, bang. They, they hammer it. And I'm talking like two days. Yeah. Two days after ice out. If you have a consistent two to three days of sunshine after the lid comes off the lake. You will have those big females automatically come and warm their blood. Yep. And if you know where you're looking, it's on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and that's that's one of the things that we've been trying to work on a lot the last few years myself. Because, like, I've always just kind of gone out and, like, okay, well, I have a general idea of how to catch fish, and that's all I really care about. Like, I just want to catch a couple of fish. Yeah. But, like, two years ago, it's like, okay, that's not enough for me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'm starting to learn more about how productive the early spring especially immediately after ice out can be i've put much more time and focus into learning that those those nuances that separate from i've caught some fish to i went out and hammered a couple of giants to start the day you have to start the season yeah i mean in in reality we're, we're gonna go out there and look for one to two bites mm -hmm. hopefully we, you know we're not gonna go <laughs> real shallow you're gonna find dinks they'll move up real quick you know overall well you're looking for a five plus pounder you're looking for a 45 degree bank on a main lake stretch with shallow water to either side or both mm -hmm. sides whether it be a weedy cove bay or shallow rock field some staging area and what they're going to do is they're going to stage right up into the sun they're not ready to quite move shallow Yep. But they're going to move up into that sun. They want to be able to pull back down. Big time. And that's what you're looking for. Yep. Anytime you can find steep banks, I've always been a big proponent of steep yeah. banks that are adjacent to really good deep water mm -hmm. and expansive deep water. And then yes. on the other side of that bank, good shallow area, whether it's riprap rock or just rocks in general or that dark black mm. monkey bottom, anything oh, that yeah. absorbs heat like crazy. Timber. Tim timber. Timber is a big yeah. one for large that mouth. That's, a, that's another covered in leaves. episode, yep. really. Is we could talk about timber and how they relate to it. Seriously. That's actually something that we've talked about like probably the last two years, an idea I had where if I could figure out a way to get power to a GoPro underwater, for like eight hours i want to set up like there's a couple of trees like so that spot out in um yeah. greenfield area like okay like mm -hmm. where i caught my previous pb mm -hmm. um oh, there's that so sweet. from the boat launch like what a couple hundred feet down the left there's that one tree that's been out there for like the last 20 years and it's always got fish i would love to set up a gopro left right and then out dead center and just face it in and let it run for eight hours like at various points of the season to see how they're relating to that tree in 40 degree water 50 60 70 like the whole you know just Mm -hmm. I would love to be able to do that. And that's a great spot to do it because even on the deepest end, it's only like seven, eight feet deep. Yeah, so to get down deep. there and set something up wouldn't be too hard. I just don't have a reliable way of getting power to a GoPro that long. Like yeah. a one-hour window probably isn't enough. Battery pack on no. the float. Yeah, but I still need a way to get the cable down into the GoPro and make sure that's watertight too. Those little I don't think that'll be that safe. It's plugged my, it's plugged my boat for the last two years. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, I'll say when it comes to timber, I mean, even just a simple twig that's coming off the bottom and hanging out six to eight inches off will radiate heat and they will be attracted to it. Yep, big time. Sorry, I keep talking out because the chat's not live over there on your laptop and I don't know why. Everything else is good. Oh, click on top chat and make it go live chat there we are oh my god andrew <laughs> chat's <don't> gonna <sighs> all right that was the last piece of the puzzle um all right oh so ben raymond's watching awesome yeah donkey go here <laughs> <laughs> 
What's up, Ben? No, I haven't heard. I haven't talked to Ben in a while. Last time I talked to Ben, we traded beer. Because he's in quarantine. He is. Poor bastard. Yikes. Hey, we've all been through it. Yep. Not I. No, not I. But I just want to agree. <laughs> I'm vaccinated. I got to get mine done soon. Actually, my wife's going for it tomorrow. Lucky her, she's getting her first shot. I'm able to connect chat. chat. Buddy. What happened? What did I do? I was gonna say, I, I'm just going to pull phone, it up on my phone, and then we'll be good. Okay. So that way I can have You might need to pull it up on your phone over there, blind man, so you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> you know... Dude, figurative. All right. No, stop that. <laughs> I need a way just to prop this up. Okay, so we're talking. We basically just got right into talking about ice out. And you just started right off with talking like the very first thing, which was steep banks. 45 mm. degrees, main leg points, off steep water, adjacent to good shallow flats. Stuff where they can go, like, depending on what the... And anybody that lives in New England, New Hampshire, knows how drastically weather can shift in one day. Like, the during hours. the day, <laughs> massive cold front rolls in. It, oh, it yeah. kills things. And they'll go right back down to 20 feet. Right. But now, with those steep banks, that, that's the key. They can go from a foot of water down to 20 in a 50-foot swim. Yep. So, that's, that's why I've always talked about... Steep banks. Every every single freaking video in the spring. And, that, said steep and that will hold true throughout the year. Especially mm -hmm. for the the big dominant females that we're all looking for. It's 45 degree steep banks. I mean, in a tournament, if I'm fishing a tournament, I have a nice limit. And I know I need a big, largey kicker like to really put me over. Yep. I will hit main lake steep banks. I don't care what the conditions are. Yep. And I'll break out a jig and I will grind on it. Right, because mm -hmm. it's your highest probability area. That's another for a big one. Right, yeah. And that's another like phrase I've been saying like probably the last year and a half, maybe year, but like that that's really what it comes down to. People keep asking like, who? Well, why do you go here? Or why do you go there? Like, what is it that drives you to look at these particular areas? Because it's your highest probability area. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be there, but year in and year out, that is the most consistent. It's they're not going to be there. They're going to be close to it. Right, yeah. it, and that's like. Whether they're, they're up top or they're, they're down below or in correct. the middle, yep. they're going to mm -hmm. be there. Yep. And yep. you eliminate a ton of water. Like, if they're not holding, and not even just bass, bait. Like, there's been plenty of spots in the spring where... Oh, yeah, where, bait do the same thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I'll go, like, the, our, our pond. Like, the, the pond. Yeah. And there's that one point that you yeah. and I were tag-teaming every other day this spring. Yeah. And, like, I never really focused on that point. And then last year, and especially this year, I really realized, like, okay, that, that's a good steep bank. It's one of, like, a handful there. Mm -hmm. But that one, for some reason, holds all the bait. Like, all those other juicy banks, at some point in the season, they're good, but not the early spring. Because, in the, like, I go there, that one good point, and there's bait, top to bottom, for, like, hundreds of feet. And then you go to those other wicked productive banks, and it's, it's devoid of anything. I still catch fish here and there. Well, early spring, well, bait will, they'll spawn under the ice, too, especially, like, yellows. True. Yep. And so, you're looking for areas where they just came off their spawn, right off, right after ice out, which will be those shallow, weedy coves. Yep. So a steep bank adjacent to that will hold more bait. Yep. Because they'll have just staged back out to main lake or they'll still be kind of right on that transitional area. Which makes yeah. perfect sense mm -hmm. to where those perch got all their happy juices all over you. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah I mean, that's, that is like the... <laughs> if you had to pick an ideal, like, uh, typical kettle pond for New England <clears throat> or New Hampshire, there. that pond is it. Oh, <laughs> it yeah. doesn't get any more kettle pond than that. Yeah. It, it's shallow, and when you talk steep bank there, right in front of that channel, it's what, six feet deep? Yeah. And the, you know, the bank's like that. Whatever. It's like one of the only steep banks in the whole freaking pond, other than the other point to the far left. Like that's that's where they were. Little ponds are a whole other conversation, though. I mean, they do be, they behave differently. Yeah, and that, so that's one of the things I do want to talk about, too, <clears throat> as, as the conversation evolves. So what we'll do a little bit differently, because... Large mouth tend to be a little bit more like small mouth. What we talked about last week, like everything's pretty generic for information, right? Like you don't really find them in shallow deep ponds. You do, but nowhere near. Whereas like large mouth are freaking all over the place. Mm -hmm. Right. So 
Whereas last week we really focused on baits and techniques and like areas we like to fish. I want to do the same thing for this, but condense that a little shorter and then break down different bodies of water. Like Sean Miller asked in regards to everything we're talking about stained for steep water. banks, does the same hold for stained water? Like clear water oh, yeah. or stained water? It, for me, no difference. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, there's no mm -mm. difference. No, they're always looking to warm their metabolism. That's what they want to do. They want to, st I mean, they, they feed very light through the winter. They're very slow, methodical. They cruise very slow. When they get that sun penetrating through, their blood warms up, and that's all they care about, whether it's stained or clear. Um, clear water's tougher to hit. Like, like where I, I have a spot, I mean, we call it the stretch. Yep. yep. And it's been in my life for the best part of 20 years now, and I've caught multiple six and seven pounders almost every late April to late March to early April, as soon as the ice is out. And it doesn't matter the conditions. You get two days of 60 degree sun. Oh, yep. And there's a six pounder sitting in two feet of water. But they're they're right next to 20. I mean, it, it comes up from 20, 25 feet and shallows off. There's some timber and some rubble. So that's your and, little boat spot, right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure that I was thinking the same spot. Yeah. And that lake can be clear at times and then other times cloudy depending on the wind and it doesn't matter if you're there in that window of those first few days of warm sunlight you get these mondos coming out of the depths yeah so i'm gonna try and do the stream a little wait. bit we're like a couple weeks oh, away dude, and that's the thing like that's dude, seriously like, yeah that's kind of the nice thing about going to the cape is like, a month, like i just get a little bit more practice at this time of the year where i've really been struggling is like where I've been getting better, it just, you know, like that, like 50 to back to 50 has always been good, but getting closer to 50, I struggle a little bit. Mm. And on either side of 50, like four years ago, forget it. Like I, I struggled, but that's where I've been putting my focus in. That's why the last three years we've been staying out till January 1st and going back out March 1st. Cause yeah. we just chase that, you know, basically ice out to mid 40 all the way up as it works its way into New Hampshire. I just keep chasing it North. Yeah. Um, boy, once it, once it hits around here, like all our go-tos, then I, I stay because I know what's around here. And I, I know that that window, yeah. it, it just it makes it easier for me to chase those bigger fish. See, yeah. for, for me, I've, I've never, ever taken water temperature till of late. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a big boy built boat and some electronics now. But growing up and even till up to five years ago, I didn't care what the water temp was. Yep. I wanted to know what the weather was doing the last few days, what the sun was doing, especially early season we're talking. Right. And... That's all that mattered to me. Now I pay a little bit more attention to it. Yeah, because it's just another nugget in that puzzle. Yeah. You're trying to figure yeah. out to, to better break down yeah. the puzzle. Like, what are they doing and why are they doing it? Yep. What's that magic number? Yeah. So, I'm going to try and break this up a little bit and be a little more active with the chat. So, one of the things Kotu asked, mm -hmm. how far do you think move bass move during different conditions? <clears throat> I think they're, think they're trekking... 500 to 1,000 feet looking for better water oh, yeah. or staying more in the same general area. Yeah, go ahead, man. Oh, yeah. I've followed a five-pounder for, geez, pond we, which we do not speak of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've fallen a, like a, it was a four, now, were you, four to five-pounder. Were you it, scaring it away from you the whole time? No, I was sitting <laughs> freaking 100 feet from me. You can see it up in the shallow. And I just followed it along the shoreline for, I don't know. Yeah, just like a nice, like, gentle, back, meandering cruise. like yeah, All the way back up to that, that first point where that deep drop off, drop off is. So do you remember what the conditions were leading up to that and what they were that day? It or was, even at least I mean, day? it was it was kind of cold. It was a day, I think it was a day me and Kristen went out there. It was fall. Was it sunny? It was sunny. Yeah. yeah. And it was, exactly but, but it was cold. It was, the water was freezing. Yeah. I think it was. But they're cold blooded, for, you gotta remember. But, yeah, right. He was so right just a degree can really moving. get them get them moving. I know I can, I have an example of me and my father. Um, we were fishing. Uh, local local lake here smaller lake yep and there's this big patch of rock and a shallow flat point and a point and it's probably a thousand yards maybe more than that but roughly around a thousand yards from point to point my father caught a fish we took a picture it was a nice three and a half pound or whatever yep had a distinct mark on its side two hours later we came back around i caught it on the other point no kidding same fish <laughs> so it was searching for food and what, what time of year was that again? That was like... Dead summer. Okay, so... Yeah. Sunny, hot day. Sunny, you know, calm morning. I don't remember much wind or anything. Rafter Fishing I, was slow. Yep. 
Rafter and I, at the point at which we did not speak, same deal. We, we caught one that was, it was four something. I don't remember. It was like low fours. Um, but it was post spawn and her tail was still a little bit beat up. And if you go around the first point to the back, there's, it used to be, I think, a boathouse and like what's left oh, of the yeah. footing is there, but then there's that dock. Oh, yeah. So it's just to the left of that. And there's a boat. Yeah, and he <laughs> caught it. So there's that, there's that dock and then there's that little tree branch, like 50 feet to the left of it. Yeah. And I usually catch something off that, like post spawn. And he pitches his jig in there, boom, low force. And we worked our way down past that next point and there was another tree and it was it's um you know it, it's that, like that sandy stretch it's super shallow and then you get that one like giant tree that's been dead hanging like 10 feet over the water but like at a super shallow angle and i think josh got hung up at the tree and i go in to get his jig and i look down and there's a giant sitting there like a foot of water i dropped my jig in front of her face and she smoked it it was the same fish yeah tail's all beat shit and yeah. so now she's like almost a thousand feet away yeah and like we did nothing but you know it was it was perfect post mom we were just hammering a jig like troll motor on high we're blasting our way down that thing i don't know if this is refreshing but swim bait scrutiny favorite ice out bait oh yeah sorry buddy we're so a little behind here for me yeah i'm, I'm right there with you oh where am up, I up. so there's a three eighths uh i have these custom made by burke's bait um with a Psycho Dad, Yamo Psycho Dad trailer. It's compact. I um, I actually split the weed guard here with either, you can use a little black rubber band or a piece of wire. Split the weed guard. I cut the trailer down, cut the skirt down, very nice and compact. They don't want, they will, because this guy's proven it. They will hit a big bulky jig right after ice out, but they prefer to suck in a tiny little morsel like this. I mean, it's still bulky enough to get a big in but it's not like your big aggressive summertime, big thick, right, heavy jig. Hold up your your go to ice out and put it right against mine. Yeah. And that's exactly why. So I will still do that, but that's why I go to the spider jig. That's almost identical in okay. profile and everything. Mm -hmm. just got the right. <clears throat> so for me, that's spider jig. I mean, how many times have I said it? I literally just put out a video yesterday. The only fish we got of the day was on that spider. That jig. being said, this will be tied up in my boat all year. Mm -hmm. But for one bait for ice out, this is I'm, I'm throwing this all day, every day until the jerk bait bite starts, which is a little later. Yep, they're still stuck to bottom, even in when they stage up. Yep. So actually, Andrew, if finesse swim, um, well you can see swim on the white duct tape. Can you grab that for me, please? Because there's one other bait I want to talk about. But this we just also, I've been using stuff. this for ice out like, since I was a kid, which is why I brought it. I left my jerkbait box in my friggin' boat. And I don't really fish it as a jerkbait. It's a bomber long A. It's floater. Um, I like to throw it on those same areas over timber, shallow, sunny spots where they're staging up. And I, I sometimes I used to throw it with braid when I was younger. Now I throw it probably with fluoro more. And you throw it in super shallow, almost on the bank, and you just twitch the hell out of it. Boom, boom, boom. Violent twitches. Don't swim it. Just twitch, 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 and you get those those fish to respond. I mean, they smash it. No. I watched my dad pull that bait off a chunk of ice. The only time he ever, he just claimed to fame, he said he was ice yeah. fishing. Yeah, he's ice fishing. <laughs> <laughs> he cast that thing onto the ice, pulled it off, twitched it, boom. First fish of the year. So remember Jake? They used to live below me when I was renting Man. over on Osgood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to say his last name just in case. Oh. Um, Maybe he's watching. That's true. He actually just We're not me teaching him anything. <laughs> no, no, he should be here teaching no. us. Um, yeah. Jesus, yeah. That little pond behind us where we used to rent yeah. over on Osgood, he, dude, he would tell me all the time, like, and this is going back now, oh my God, 14 years when yeah. I first started renting there when he was there, when I was like just starting to realize I didn't know shit. I got here. And yeah. I was trying to learn. And he, uh, yeah, careful with the cables there, bud. I see them. Good luck. <laughs> um, God. He had a bunch of days where he was working just a, a drop shot, and he'd drag it right to the edge of the ice and drop it straight down oh, and yeah. smoke them. And a little different because it's such a tiny little pond that those things were starved for anything they could get anyway, mm -hmm. to an extent. I know he threw like shiners and cross and stuff in there. One of the first places I fish, um, it's um, part of the reservoir chain that we have around here in mm -hmm. Merrimack. Yep. And there's a, you know, the tunnel, the bridge goes over two sections of it, so there's moving water, and it always opens up fast. Yep. I mean, I can't count how many fish I've caught on the way home from work, where there's still ice on both sides, flicking my jig out. Yep. 
onto the ice and dropping it into that channel and moving water when the sun's high. Yeah. It's, you know? That's yeah. insane. It's so crazy. One of the things I wanted to talk about for go to ice out baits, I gotta back up. Who said that? Oh, that was Travis. Oh, no. <laughs> well, hang on. Who the hell asked that? What? Someone asked, what you, oh, that was uh, Swimbait Scrutiny. Sorry, that was yeah. one of your favorite ice out baits. So the other thing, and this is not the perfect example, but it's one of them, and I actually covered it in my ice out baits video. It's just a three inch swim bait. And typically in really cold water, I like black with a blue flake, like dark, I don't know why. It's the only color you ever need. Really, like see, even in clear water, I don't know why. It's like that blood red craw, like that kind of makes a little bit more sense, but you gotta wiggle around, there you go. Click it, don't remind you. Um, like black and blue just is it and i can get green pumpkin to work a little bit better on a swim bait but my god that black and blue but so anyway this is oh Hell. yeah hit the mic like uh oh shit. did it go away no i think we're all right all right i mean it's it's still alive i just want to make sure that it's still centered yeah we're, no, we're good all right Ooh. um Jesus that's my second well uh, probably third i've got my spider jig is my number one you gotta split that weed guard guy yeah i know i gotta do that i i never even thought about that and it, it's I. I'll show it on this heavy. This is different... a Beast Coast jig. What are these called? These big ones. The uh, that's not the Vanquish, is it? No, that's, that's the that Gorilla. Big... Yeah, the Gorilla swim jig, the double brush guard. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a swim jig though. No, you're right. It's uh, what but it is the Gorilla because that's yeah. The it's double. a Beast Coast. You'll get better hookups. Yeah. It'll still not get hung in timber. So, sorry. Spider jig is number one. Regular oh, jig is number two. And then now wire, my number yeah. three when I'm talking bottom contact. Hookup. Is just a little three inch swim bait, and I will fish that on a variety of weight heads. Like, it's the same deal for the smallmouth that I talked about last week, but it works killer for largemouth. Like, how many times did we go out there this year when we were kind of struggling? That was the only goddamn thing to get bit. Oh, mm -hmm. on like a 1 8th or even a 3 16th ounce head. Well, for the last like six weeks. Well, at the end of the season, but at the beginning of the season, like that, that season, right there. Oh, yeah. This is a stupid Z man. My, like, that's, it's kind of. Was it my first fish? Stiff. First fish. <laughs> yeah, it is. But it, it's still like, they liked it. So I, I but. I mean, all of our bite, I wasn't swimming the damn thing. It was just sitting there. Right. So I think having that kind of more stiffer action in the cold water helped to extend because it just, it stood. That's just a guess. No, but it, you're right. But it just, it that's stood what the there. That's what doing, too. They're right. cold. They're just like, oh, <laughs> this sucks, man. This shit. I'm 40 Florida. feet of water. It's like 36 degrees down here. <laughs> Everything's like, shit, this sucks. Um, Why well, split the weed guard? Oh, Jamie. All right, so, oh, Travis. So, favorite snack on the boat? I Dude, tell Dustin. I didn't get my order today. I was supposed to. I ordered five towns bags of beef jerky from Empire Beef Jerky because now it's open water season and I want snacks in the boat. Um, and I was they were supposed to be here today, but I don't think they shipped. So, why um, split the weed guard? So, maybe there's no reason to do it, really. But for me, it bulks up the jig while still keeping it compact. And there's no interference when setting the hook on a fish you're still blocking the jig from hitting any brush if you're gentle with it it'll go over and fold over anything if but anything, when you set the hook pass. there's nothing in the way and it, especially more important with these big thick weed guards i find it increases my hook set ratio i feel especially if you're you know i'm not using really heavy line when i'm fishing early i'm you know i might be using 10 pound floro with a quarter ounce Depending, I really like three three eight sounds, but That's I'm like not using heavy weight. gear right. that you can just send it. So I, I just it's something that I learned years ago, and I, mean, I do if it. I'm, if I'm planning on throwing, I'm planning on going throwing anything, but a, like nothing more than a quarter ounce, I'll go out with twelve pound line. Yeah, and still, you still just got to hammer on more because you still yeah. got to get past that brush guard. This is a good idea though. Yeah. Yep. Especially like this this one uh, we're gonna talk about later. This is I have these custom made for fishing beds in stained water. But they barely grab the thing, so I mean this one's really light because I did it with a rubber band. Um, but you get a better hook set. You can cut them off completely for spawn fish like bed fishing. Yep. Um oh, so this will get through a lot more brush too. Oh it like just it just bounces like right through. Yeah, you yeah. don't you don't notice the difference. Right. Nice. But when you set the hook, there's nothing in front of the hook. Right. You know, but flesh. Yep. And yeah. So, so one of the questions Jamie McGarry asked, are you barely moving these jigs after ice out? How slow is your approach? And we're going to start moving the conversation a little bit. I'm going to let you, because like, when we're talking slow, 
Like he's like, I don't think there's anybody slower, more methodical than you. There's a lot of us that are close, but no, you, you kind of redefined it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. He's he good did. At it. That's why he catches all the biggest fish most often because he's the slowest, most methodical person I've ever seen in my well, life. Let's not make his head too big. I catch big ones too. That's nah, okay. I don't think he can make his head too big. <laughs> I don't remember what just happened. Slow. <laughs> so are you barely moving slow. the jigs after ice out? How yeah. slow? Yes. Oh, slow. Slow. You want to make a long cast, literally too short. And I like to crawl jigs. I mean, if you watch the behavior of a crawfish, most times they're not swimming they're just unless like... they're worried about getting eaten. <laughs> they're slowly crawling. So you don't want to pop your jig constantly. You want to kind of just drag it. Pop right. once in a while, but yep. you want it to look like it's walking along the bottom doing its Usually normal Usually you have thing. it so it's coming across. Like if you're going to come up, you're, you're going to bump a boulder and then or you something, pop. and then you pop it, it goes because they always do that little thing and then they come back down yep let it drop and, and then you want sit. it to start walking and that's when a fish walking. is going to come up and just smack it yep right and slow. to go slow. adding on everything they said going slow keep me low side sweeping i'm not lifting the rod straight in front of me i'm trying i'm actually standing perpendicular to where my line is i'm keeping the rod flat so i don't inadvertently lift the jig higher than it really should be it's just depends on that, how disciplined yeah. you are for me it just helps to be better disciplined and making sure that my jig's doing really what i want it to in my head yeah and that can depend real bad wind or whatever too yep. you're going to want to position your rod differently sometimes i drag it with my rod facing the, you know, down towards the water right so yep. that the wind's not grabbing it and moving it quicker than i want right yeah because you're still going to want to feel that that bite mm -hmm. not through the freaking slack of the wind right yeah you got to keep all your lines submerged yep other than so, it, Andrew, just to kind of expand on, like, what they're asking for speed and stuff. Speed. Break, break it down a little bit more in depth for, like, your cadence, your timing, for what, how you're working a jig immediately after ISO, I'd say upwards of, like, mid-40s, upper-40s, where, you know, they're, like, more consistently up in the shallow where you start fishing more aggressively. So, I, well, obviously, you're always looking for some sort of structure, either it'd be timber, a hard grass line, or big boulders, or Bricks. any, any, yeah, any sort of break or anything. And when I when it's super cold, I'll sit, I'll cast out, and I'll let it sit. And I won't touch it for. I don't know, could be if I'm by myself and he's not moving the boat around. Like, mm -hmm. I'll sit out. You too much I'll not? sit out there for two minutes. <laughs> Drags you into all those seven even, pounders you catch without even touching it. And yes, it's gotta give you shit, right? <laughs> I won't even touch it for two minutes, and then I'll start. I'll pop it, and then I'll start dragging it real slow, and then I'll just let it sit again, and I'll just do the same thing, and I'll I'll pick apart a rock. Mm -hmm. The same rock or the same tree. I'll be I'll, I fished this, the exact same tree for an hour straight, and yeah. I finally got a fish off it. Yeah, yep. like it, sometimes it just takes that long. And like another another important thing is work your cast literally back to the bottom of the boat, especially if you're fishing these areas we're talking about, all the way to the bank to underneath the boat. Don't get halfway and reel it up frustrated and get a bite because they might be under you and you don't know it yet. Right, like that you got to work your cast the whole thing. Like that shoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. I was, I, I actually was just after. Was it five weeks after I caught my PB? It was April. I think it was April. Was it April? Was it, oh, I caught that six nine. Yep. Off the tree. <clears throat> yep. I cast into that same spot five or six times, and she hit it every single time. And then finally, like she would come up, she would hit it and drop it, hit it, drop it. It was just that fast. And it was still cold out. Like, it was still, I think it was maybe 45 degrees out that day, and it was rainy. And I pitched in there one last time. I was like, I'm just going to let it eat it. And, uh, and pitched in, felt her bite, felt her bite again. And then I just saw the line start to move. I'm like, oh, she's got it finally. But it took 15, 20 seconds for her to finally get it down her throat. Yeah. And yeah. I got the picture, so. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Matt Burroughs asked, what weight are y'all using on your jigs? Um, specifically for, I'll start at three eighths. Like yeah. three eighths and half, that's it. Mm -hmm. well, especially when we're talking skirted jigs or even spider jigs. I rarely divert from that. I, I don't even like throwing half. Yeah, three I, so man. that's what I used to do for the longest time. I, yeah, and then three someone, three I was talking to someone, they were like, try three eighths and see if that changes. Because I was going through a bit of a rough patch with my jig. And I switched to that and I haven't gone back. Like I still have pretty much everything I have from Beast Ghost. It's all either three eighths or... Well, it's seven sixteenths, and then. I mean, you have to use heavier ones eights. on big lakes and wind. I mean. Yeah, so I have them, but my preference is three eighths, like mm -hmm. three eighths, and then I play with 
Dude, how many totes do I have up there that are just jig trailers? Six? <laughs> like, the rule of thumb... Probably, yeah. <laughs> ...for me would be go as... Li- and this will go with any style of fishing, really, drop shot weeds. Um, go as light as you can get away with. Yep. Right. Yeah, because you're not going to be throwing a quarter-ounce drop shot weight in 50 feet of water. I think it's much... You, don't you do can't that. do that. You'll be waiting there for 20 minutes. But when you can get away with quarter-ounce, do it. I mean, all the sensitivity of a lighter a lighter weight bait is just... And the it's fall. there, and yeah. Right. How natural it looks. Yep. Yeah. That's the thing I got away from on like little bit. cylinders. It'd be an, if it was, if this was on like an eighth or quarter ounce, these things would be all over. The I place. shouldn't even have showed you guys these. <laughs> so actually, while we're on the subject of that, like, these out. so let, let's wrap up the the ice out thing because it's already eight forty, and I want to make yeah. sure we have time to go through the rest of the year. Let's but, move on to spawn. Yeah. Well, before we go, because there's one last thing I want to talk about is trailers. But you know, again, like I really wanted to really iterate on ice out. And immediately after ice out, because it's right around the corner. If you're in Mass or Connecticut, like anywhere along the coast, it's now. And for everybody else, it's only a couple weeks away, especially if you saw the forecast this week. Oh, like, yeah, I'm ready. Like, good. Lakes Region yeah. North is. You're, it's going to be a while, right? All your thicker ice, higher elevation, the whole nine yards. But this is coming. That's why we put way more focus on this, because that's the most pertinent information that you want to have moving forward. More important than anything, if anybody hasn't already started buying stuff, if you have the money, do it now, because I've already been buying stuff like the last month, and have the stuff I typically buy for the ice out, I can't get. It's all out of COVID has is still kicking the crap for the fishing industry. Oh, oh it yeah. blew up last year. Couple that with the fact that a lot of these factories and manufacturers could not get as many people in the factories to manufacture things as they wanted to, and that's across the entire world, every industry. So fishing is not unique in that, but fishing has gotten hit hard. Couple the fact that it's probably doubled in popularity. Boat sales up were up 10% across the board, something like that, last year. That's insane. Even in a major recession, boat sales were skyrocketing. So, if there's anything you're thinking of about buying, do it now. Don't wait. If you got the money, just get it done. Um, yeah. And that goes with hunting, too. I'm a huge deer hunter. Jesus Christ. Dude, everything. <laughs> Go get outdoors. your new bow now, because I'm waiting till May for mine. You already Out- got it. Well, you bought it. Well, yeah. <laughs> wait, so you just ordered it, and it was what? May? At the earliest this year. Oh, that's well, nasty, though. Our buddy Travis bought a quad, what, December? Yeah. And it's just getting delivered next week? Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's insane. But that's across the board. Like, they were even saying that even canoes and kayaks all last year, they, like, everywhere. Didn't matter what the price was, they are selling out. So, that's that's the point. Um, Real quick to address the question, jig trailers. And that's, we change that's the other thing I wanted right. to talk about before okay. we jumped on to the next type of We all do it a little differently. Though. Yeah, it's preference. It definitely is. Uh, I like a tighter, compact jig usually year round but if they're looking for something on a slower fall i will for sure switch it to something like uh well like a like um a beast coast marauder beast coast marauder is almost in the middle between something like or like the zoom um what are those zooms called yeah those zoom chunks jumps those are my go-to in cold water because they flutter they fall slow but because like they there's like no there's no taper on the leg like there's no lumps on the sides like they're as straight and thin as you can get so it's a very subtle flutter yeah and then beast goes is that next step up just because yep. they have that little bit of lump on the tip but they're not curled and crazy like a striking uh rage crop like that's about as violent as a yeah. trailer yeah, as you can get and like for me i'd ne- i would never throw one of them really yeah not my thing <laughs> well i'm actually kind of surprised those things the strike it's all rage confidence crop. baits though that's the true stuff i have confidence in well, I don't like the cro- I don't like when they kick all over the place, but that's just personally me and like right. what I've had success with. Right, fucking kill. So. Yeah, right. I have friends that love them. Um, that thing's missing a leg, half a leg. Is it? Oh yeah, with a half. Oh is it god, just... it's stubbed. <laughs> <laughs> you you grabbed a really bad one. <laughs> I have no legs. But that's so that's your go-to jig trailer. Well, um, for you early, cut that down early or? season. It mm-hmm. depends. You cut it down. I cut it. it I cut. cut I cut the head off of it. Yeah, right okay. down to the yeah. top two appendages. Two legs. Appendages in the spring. I so. So you can see we all have our we all have our own favorite. But I will yep. use this up until it's hot, and then I'll move to what was it the rage tail? Um, not the structure. Well, like, structure it, it's bug. similar to that. As well, soon I thought as it's got the out. bigger, it's got the bigger legs on. As it. soon as the weeds start to grow too, I I put the, the jig away and go to a Texas rig. So, and that's a why... A Texas rig, 38 bullet weight. Yep. So, 
and we're not going to talk about your juice because no. but that, that's why i'm surprised you haven't tried these or you don't like them because when i go to texas rig that's one of my confidence base no and that thing kills it the same thing oh, you, you guys kill it right yeah. works great too but this is there's like, no reason behind my opinion <laughs> no no i know it's just i was kind of shocked you said because i figured that was going to be in your like bag of confidence base i have um, a few bags in the boat for sure yeah you gotta yeah. Everyone's got a few bags. Yeah. To work in the Let me get close. So this was this this is what we're talking about. Zoom super chunk. Anything of that profile, like that's our our cold water go to. And you can see, hopefully, eh, all right, camera's a little fuzzy, but you kind of get the idea of it. Like it's really thin. There's nothing special to it. It's just dead plastic basically. But it's good because it's got the profile of what you're looking for, without a ton of action, which is what you want in cold water. You want profile, no action. Right. Beast Coast Marauder. And then what did you just have out? Uh, the Rage. Oh, you gotta wiggle the mouse again. Um, structure bug. This is like structure bug. the next step. And I know I'm not in the camera, but I want to get more focus on the base than anything else. And like the legs are really straight, but you get just that little bit of meat right at the tips. Right down in here. Right. So it like it will flutter, but not crazy. Not like a Rage Craw that has both meat and like twirly tail action to it almost. You know what I mean? Oh, I love coffee. Um. Those are awesome on the back of a chatterbait too. Big time, hook big them, time. Hook them like that, oh baby. And then like that's the next step up, right? Where you know, same kind of deal. It's well, there we go. It's okay. thin, <laughs> but it's just got a little <laughs> bit of curlage to the tail, so it's you know active but not crazy active. And they'll just stand there, you know. And then like the most extreme thing is the striking rage cog, you know, where it's got meat and it's got like a little curl to it so when that falls those things dance like crazy and kind of like I, those twin tails i like throwing those on a jig too like if i feel like they're keying in on the fall and i got something small i will throw a hula grub yeah. on a skirted jig a three it's on skirted jig because it just with i mean the additional smallies, skirt, it slows even that's where mine go my my mind goes to yep that, yeah. and you know these are like they're they're active but quite the largest aren't they it's oh, it's like sure. a different kind of active just because it's got that twirly oh, tail, yeah. but it's yeah, all definitely. thin. So like that that's kind of the the whole <clears throat> that runs the whole gamut of all of our like cold water jig trailers. Scrutiny was asking what I'm drinking. I actually drank this a couple weeks ago. Definitive Brewing Company. It's I know it's base reflex, but I'm saying bass reflex because this is bass type. <laughs> <laughs> um, every use swim baits. Miles, you're gonna have to be a little more specific because what people call swim baits varies greatly. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I do fish swim baits, but mm -hmm. I fish swim baits. <laughs> like it, it, yeah. You gotta, you gotta specify. Um, but we'll we'll circle back to that because I'm gonna move on to the next step. So we really covered ice out. Now we can kind of move bang bang through the rest of the season. Um, now we're, we're talking pre-spawn, basically. Um, 50, yeah, a little no, more than that, like mid-50s <laughs> to like mid-60s. Wind blown banks, pre-spawn. Can That's I have? my go-to. We went out, dude, We went when we saw that school, like 500 bass. Mm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And then the five-pounder sitting below them all. Mm -hmm. Above the uh, flogger, yeah. Spin rate box, please. Um, you calling on that? Oh, yeah, damn. This cold. exact bait, I think it was. I think it was that, too, yeah. That little orange blade. I was throwing the, uh, the square bill when you were throwing that. Oh, that's a good sound. All right, dude. This thing is stacked. That's the sound of success. <laughs> so, I've got a few go-tos that are really hard to beat, but it's just one of several approaches. Is that... I thought I had one more in here. Oh, where the hell did I put that one? Didn't you just have it the last weekend? I think so. Is it up there just like on a pile of crap in the corner? I'll add that I, I would still throw my jig. Yep, that's uh, like, the perchy one. Yeah, and so for spawn, the... I'm still grinding oh, dude, my I'm jig. We had a conversation about this. It's why you have 25 rods on your deck. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, me and you had a conversation about this. Don't put the jig down. Don't. I'm never going to. Not until <laughs> spawn is over. Do you not put the jig never. down? Not never. Ice out to ice in. It, yeah. It's my confidence bait well, all when, year long. When the weeds get real heavy in certain areas, especially where yeah. we fish southern New Hampshire, well, it's very them. weedy. We're fishing yeah. shallow, you know, boggy nastiness a lot of times yeah that's what i'll move to the and so it's hard to chuck a jig because and, and it's hard to even like um a place like pow pow right you throw i mean now my biggest fish i ever caught out there on a spinnerbait was six eight 
It's huge fish. But mm -hmm. it was a year that the weeds didn't grow the way they normally do. Yep. Normally, they have these, these, I don't even know what it's called, it's, but it's like this spaghetti thin. Yeah, I don't know. It's, every cast of your spinnerbait, you're bringing in I know this, exactly what you're talking and about. And it's all that. wound. You can't even fish the thing. And yeah. it's nope. like, oh. And, you know, you get, you get, you can throw a thunder cricket. That does the trick. You can kind of bob through those weeds, a swim jig. And that's when I go to that. Exactly. When that shit starts coming up, like, yeah. in full force, that's when I'll move to that. And I'll work that as down and low as, like, 45 degrees. And I don't necessarily always throw the... Um, Miyagi from Beast yeah, Coast on the trailer. that's an aggressive one. It is. That's about as big and bulky and aggressive as you can get. But if they're laying into oh, this yeah. combo, Ooh. that's your upsides right there. That's yeah. that's the, the next step up. It doesn't get any bulkier than that. I still throw Texas rig in that stuff. Like, oh, that, well, that's for sure. I mean, obviously, but... Yeah, yeah my, my jig goes to a Texas rig immediately when the weeds come up. And that's it. And then I will grow that all year. Right. Yep. If so, I can't swim, if I can't move a jig through something, I'll switch to Texas rig. I'll yeah, punch thousand percent. Those holes. Yep. So, if we're talking, like, pre-spawn, holy crap. On the deck. Because I'll throw a bit of everything. And, like, Drop shot, spinner bait. And also, I'll, even, for, you know, for largies. Yeah, oh, it's pretty much jig, square bill, and jerk bait for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's what square killed bill. it for me this last year. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. So I like the, one I, of these little, this is a six cents. I love this little thing. Not too far off. Yeah, that's almost the same color that I was thinking. It's just a little bit bulkier. That's a custom paint from Rocky Ledge Tackle, which is based out of New Hampshire. I think it's just a Lucky Craft square bill, but you just put a brown craw pattern on it. That thing, I have two. I have this one, which I've slightly modified. See all the lead weight tape on the bottom? Oh, yeah. Just a Lucky Craft. Just a I don't even <laughs> this know what one model too. it is. $65. Oh, <laughs> that's a big boy. Yeah. It's a shallow oh, runner. Hell yeah. It runs, it runs real shallow, but it's I like huge. That. That's, that's your standard. <laughs> that's Largemouth love boy. this thing, man. And that's bigger than standard. Mm, yeah, okay, you might be right. It's like a hair above standard size, I would think. <laughs> yeah, that's a, well, oh, it's big, animal. though. It catches big ones, but it doesn't, you know, like, I have a bad shoulder from riding BMX as a kid. Yeah. And, um,. I can't chuck those giant swim baits all day. I just can't. My arm gets sore. Me neither. I, I do it fatigued. all night. Yep. That bait is still big body. <laughs> I can crank it and catch big ones on it. Yep. And I don't have to be throwing a bull shad or, you know, one of those big giant swim baits like the crazy swim bait underground guys do. I, yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. That's only like two ounces. But that's one of my go-tos now. I, I got it last year and I had a couple of really good I still love throwing them, but like, I throw those big baits very circumstantially. It'll yeah. be like now's the time. Like I'll be, I'll just see the opportunity. Like in front after of me. sunset. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at, at three a.m. with yeah. big rat. Yeah, that's the time. Those big swim baits are same for you as they are for me. It's just another tool in the toolbox. Yeah. Like when, it's all based on conditions and everything patterns and lines up. Like if that's the bait to throw, I'll throw that all goddamn day until my wrists hurt like hell. Mm -hmm. But I don't force it. Like I, I love I my my the white bullshad wake. Yep. Pre spawn bring that up. is awesome. Mm -hmm. I love it, well, but I can't throw it all day. But I will throw it on those those where the, you know they're going to spawn in a week or two. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I will throw it and I will catch fish. Dude, that yeah. was like that week I had last last year in the spring where you came out for a couple days for me. Seven straight days I caught a oh, yeah, four yeah, pounder yeah. or more for seven mm -hmm. straight days. I caught nine in the seven days. Then the last day we absolutely destroyed it. I think that's actually the and we lost a bunch that day is too. That the, that's what that's what, what the picture is for the um, yeah. Whatever. No, not thumbnail. this thumbnail. That was um, for, oh, the, for the announcing, like, I have win a day of fishing with us. That'll come up later. That's another thing we have to talk about, is the 603 Bass Apparel. If you guys haven't ordered anything yet, do it now, because the pre-order window closes tomorrow night. And that's it. It's gone. It's done. <laughs> so if you want something, hat, hoodie, t-shirt, get it now. And I'll use the same person that he does. Mint Print Works out of Nashua. And they're, they're phenomenal. Awesome. Absolutely phenomenal. Yep. Yeah. Um... Oh, what was the other thing? So, you covered spinner baits, Texas rigs, jigs, chatterbait too. Like, depending on where I'm at, like that chatterbait, when you're like, especially at the, the very beginning, like when they're more consistently riding that edge, but on the shallower edge of the transitional areas, that's where chatterbait and spinnerbait really come into play for me. Oh, yeah, 6 2 last year. That was awesome. Uh, but I've caught a lot of big fish doing that too, in general. Um, shaky head. Like, I'll right, start throwing more finesse that. stuff. Yeah. I, did I... Throwing those earlier this year. I'm going to tie, like... I love this little thing. What is that, six inch? And that's yeah. a zoom. That's too funny. Zoom that's... trick worm. 
literally the same. It's literally the same thing. You got, I think yours is thicker. So I like using these in pre-spawn, these bright ones, um, especially in murky water. And then, you you know, in the spawn as well, if you Texas rig this with like a little quarter ounce, you know, um, bobber I mean, stop. Because they're, the, they're looking yep, for something. And just chuck it in, yeah. And they're, they're underdogs. They're searching. And like, you want to be able to see your bait. Oh, yeah. as well that time of year because you're you're looking for that spawn to start and you're looking for that first sign of it so when you can see your bait and like see the fish react to it and you can figure out oh man that thing was on a bed or that mm -hmm. thing was that would think that was a male and a female doing the thing like whatever you can do to kind of keep an eye on your bait in the murky water i'm talking yep um oh, yeah. that's the way to do it which is why i use this stupid pink jig <laughs> i learned this this pink jig I learned from a guy named Mikey Mack years ago. He's no longer with us, but he was a hammer of a tournament fisherman. And he would bed fish with these pink jigs um, just so he could see them. Because you just get a glimpse of a big female on a bed in murky water. And sometimes you can't feel when they just, they suck it off the bottom and they're just moving it. They're not hitting it. They're just moving it out of their bed, moving it out of their bed with a high visible bait like that. You can just yep. Wait it. for this. <laughs> Wait for it to disappear. <laughs> Might as well put a freaking. When it goes bye bye, you just set the hook. It's awesome. Um, I got a back up. I use that for smallies too, even in clear water. It's just oh, yeah. it's a good reference to be able to see it. So Sean Miller asks preference on Texas rig, pegged or not pegged, pegged. creature bait, craw or worm. Creature bait, not pegged. Really? You like I'm not pegged. Like I'm free floating. Yep. Done it I want place. that bait to be able to come float off the back of my bait, yep. especially when I'm long casting it. If I'm pitching docks, I still don't peg it, but you, you could at that <laughs> oh, point. Oh, what was that? But I no, you just in general, just oh, preference just on general? Texas rig in general. Yeah, I, I don't peg mine. Um, it's very rare that I do. If I if I do, it's this. It's a punch weight with a big. Yep. A big bulky bait. And I didn't do that until I went and fished mats on Champlain last year. So, yeah. it, well, I take that back. I would never pegged it, and then like two years ago. And I got a whole friggin' box of those rubber, like, peg stops. You stuff them through the weight, and it's got, like, a little flange at the top. Yeah. Pull it through, cut it, and, like, it's a nice, mm -hmm. low profile. And it, they're cheaper than, like, the little bobber stops. Um, and then I felt like it was actually really hurting me. It was nicer because I know I was definitively getting down through some of, the, like, that thick stuff. Especially that, like, thin, like, linguine-style, like, lily pads. Mm -hmm. Little, like, half-dollar size lilies. Like trying to punch in that when it gets really thick, I like pegging it because I felt like I do. I do that. peg these little finesse worms. Oh, okay. The little zoom finesse worms. Yep. I do peg them, but I'm trying to fish them differently. I want them to be glued to the bottom. Yep. Not I floating usually, back. I try to peg everything. If I was gonna want to float it back, I'll, I'll just throw a Carolina rig. I won't. If I'm fishing Texas rig, I do like to peg it. Yeah. Because I want. If I'm Texas rigging something, it means I'm trying to get down through something. That that's how I do it. I'm yeah, trying to get down through. No. Not all the time. So, <clears throat> moving the conversation more towards now we're, we're fishing like. <laughs> now we're shallow, right? We, we're working towards the tail end of the pre spawn. They're getting close to pre spawn. They are shallow or just outside of super shallow. And I'll go to Andrew first. What do you like to target? Is wood, special, specific vegetation, or are you just looking for cruising shallower as you get more sight fishing? Like, is. what is your preference when we're like coming up on the cusp of spawn oh if there's a big old log sitting there with some branches hanging off it go right to it if there's a steep bank with a bunch of rocks on it go right to it yeah and i agree it's pretty much really all i'm looking for or i'm looking for that shoreline that has the grass that's coming up yep because it's getting the most heat it's getting the most sun obviously but it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be warming up a lot faster than i else. think if, if we're thinking like you know the water is what 64 and we're like oh man oh, we're mm -hmm. two degrees away yep i'm looking for anything that they're going to relate to you're never going to catch a fish on a bed that isn't next to a rock or a stump or a brick or cinder block um up on champlain they make beds on uh, on the well pumps that come out of the camps yeah oh, and there's yeah. this basket pump you can almost you don't even need to see the bed yep there's a bed there because they relate to things so you want to focus in on stuff like that even if it's just before they actually bed up they're they're not far away so mm -hmm. they're right in those areas where there's a lot of sparse structure and things to relate to they'll always relate to a certain thing you'll see a bed right next to a boulder right under a right. tree like if it's pre-spawn and, you, and you're you're going across a flat and you you know that there's a rock somewhere like just one lone rock or like one lone yeah. stick like at the 
Mm -hmm. You know, like the top. Cast on it. Don't spook it out. Mm -hmm. Long bomb it. Probably yeah. a bed underneath that tree. Or there. a fish that's, you know, mailing up, though, you know. The, yep, right. Whatever the term is. <laughs> Soften her up. Yeah. <laughs> Getting ready. <laughs> Getting ready to do the dance. Clap it was pound town. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are your go-tos, then, for baits when, like, we're on the cusp, right? They, they're shallow. They're relating to hard structure. Um, what, do you, what, is, what is the first thing you're going to throw? Me? Oh, the Texas rig. Yep. Texas rig, jerk bait, spinner bait, kind of all the same kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of similar. Uh, it's all circumstantial. Like that's the it's the hard thing to kind of like put my years of experience into somebody else so that they know what I mean. Right. It's like it depends on the if it's windy, spinner bait, for sure. Um, if it's if it's murky water. I definitely would go with a Texas rig. If I can sneak up on the structure a little bit, I'm definitely going to flip into it yep. more because I know they're there and they can't see me right away. If it's clear water, which you know we really don't have much of no. down here for largies. So yeah. I'm with any bass addict, David. He, top water, top water, top water. Mm, but only because one, of yeah. what I learned last year. Mm. Yeah, when they're up shallow, that wake bait. Yeah, I guess it was. I was just overlooking that. Yeah, it was killing it. But it's just one of many things. Otherwise, I'm I'm back to what you said. What you both said. I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, it's weird. I ask Andrew his input. We both fish the same. We're in the same damn boat 90 percent of the time. Uh, but doesn't mean we always fish the same way. I always position the boat. We can fish. However, we're always trying to do something a little different so we can break down what they want a little bit more easily. Um, but for the most part, same stuff. And he fishes slow. That he does. You, you I fish, fish fast. fast. Although I've gotten a lot better. And he credited it to me, so it's not just in my head. Hey, <laughs> slow down. down. I'm sorry. Dude, my dad has said for, for years, for since I can remember, my father's always said, when you think you're fishing slow enough, fish slower. Yep. Fish half that, and then take half of that, yep. and then divide slow that again. down. <laughs> so, depending reiterating your point it's totally condition dependent especially the few days leading up to the day i'm gonna go fishing but there is that window when you know that they're shallow and you know that they're just feasting because they're getting ready you know now you're like five degrees out from spawn and you're in like that money pre-spawn window if the wind is blowing over any shallow vegetation like emerging lily pad weed beds and it's ripping i call it work and I'm gonna go throw this, mm -hmm. throw and I'm gonna one. burn the crap out of it. Yeah. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go find like my my favorite stretch where the wind has been blowing down. Especially if I can get there like a day, like 24 hours or later after the wind's been consistently blowing down in there. I'll find the end of my weed patch, and I'll go a foot at a time and work it across it, and I'll just hammer fish after fish after fish. Like that is. I, I look for that <laughs> that specific conditions in the spring. And if there's any timber, oh, pitch something into that. Too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just like you, you can't beat that. But yeah, otherwise, like I'll I'll go hard with the jig. Shaky head works great again. Um, this starts to, like the bigger baits for me because again I'm not a diehard guy. Like this starts uh, to come into play. A little top water chatter bait. This. This works killer when they're up shallow and they're just getting ready, like they're they're putting on their final feed bag. That's when I go to the bigger, bulkier moving baits. Square mill. Oh, um, yeah, I know. Yeah, and my little trusty. We call it old Goldie, but it's a bomber long end. I have that exact same jerk bait. I'm I, now just actually looking at what you have. <laughs> tattooed on my arm. That's awesome. Is that the one? <laughs> yeah. I remember seeing that at a wedding once. <laughs> it was your arm, actually. <laughs> I got it. I got this exact lure. Not this exact one stuck in the back of my head in Canada one time when I was 13. It was my first trip. I had too much slack in the line. Buried it in my own head. Oh. Never, must never forget it. <laughs> That's awesome. Alright, so we can skip right past spawn because... Everybody knows how to catch fish on beds. Yeah, it's a little harder for largemouth, but it's still pretty easy. Yeah, and we're, I don't want to talk about it. You guys can figure that out. Um, Just use pink. Or black and blue. Jigs. They're black and blue. Or just throw a jig. Just throw a freaking jig. The oh, get there early for bed fishing. Mm -hmm. I'll add that while we gloss over it. Yep. Largemouth, if you want to get them early, because those females will drop the eggs and disappear. You'll never see them again. Yep. I still dream of that fish that I saw out of. Yeah. Yeah. With the bridges. Mm -hmm. With the bridges. Mm -hmm. It's still, I swear to God, it's the biggest fish I've ever seen in my life. Except for the one in the freaking Utica bass tank. 
Yeah, was I that dropped, Utica Bass Pro? I think that was Utica. That like 12, whatever it was? Yeah, I dropped one. Like big old half dollar yeah, eyeball. I, I saw that <laughs> fish a week later and it, it was nine. Dude, it was big. Yep. Yeah. That was my first guess. I dropped mm -hmm. one right around that size. Yep. That was the rat. So swim bait scrutiny, if he's here, he lost that same fish. That's a it big had pond. to have been. How many fish are in there do you think are that size? And then, <laughs> more than and you off, think, and probably. And off that same point? Uh, I don't remember where he hooked his. They will tend to bed. I will say this: they, if you if you find a big mature female, yeah, go they, find her again the next year. Yeah. Well, she that's did. why I told you guys about there. that fish. I did that. Like, I, it wasn't even a question because I was like, someone has to catch this thing, mm -hmm. and I remember that like the bigger females tend to go back to the same areas, maybe not the exact same spot, but at least the same general area, and then that's such a high probability area anyway. I was like. I was losing my mind. I was like, God, I hope I come back here and get another shot her. But I was like, yep, I'm telling Kyle, I'm telling Andrew, I'm telling Travis. Like, yeah, all my closest friends that live near this, you that, need that to know. And again, that was a hard right. fish to catch. Yeah. Dude. She was spawning in murky water. She wanted nothing to do with anything. Shallow bed. Yeah, what, like a foot and a half of water right there? Yeah, dude. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't believe it. I swear and to God, if was, I was a log, I was like, and I can't run up on She had been there, water, done oh. that, man. She was like, no, you guys are not going to catch me. TJ, how big do you think that thing was? I remember you saying he, it was, it I, had to my initial thought was nine. Then I let my emotions get ahead of myself because I was so hyped about it. I was like, dude, it has to be close to state record size. Whatever. I don't know. Him and Han about a pound, but yeah, I would say nine. Yeah, it was. That's a safe bet. It like it, it was in a foot of water and it came right underneath my feet, right at the towing motor. So it's not like I was trying to gauge dude, it from my a distance. My New Hampshire PB is eight five. That's and, insane. And it, and it was, if not, the same bigger yep. by an inch or two or three. That was a big fish. It's hard to tell when they're sitting there swirling around a bed. <laughs> um, all right, so post spawn. Where are you looking? What are you throwing? Nice. If it's warming up, I like to go main lake steep banks. That's where I start grinding on them. Right outside the spawning flats. Yep. And my style of fishing brings me back to a jig, Texas rig. Um, depending on the lake, I'll jerk bait. Um, and then I like to move into some shallow mats as it moves along. I'll start frogging as, you know, depending on how far out we're talking June, July into the summer. But We'll say before the bluegill spawn. Post, like immediate oh. post spawn to before the bluegill spawn. That's that window where they I'll stay shallow to recover but they're not going far because they, don't they, go they far. won't go far until after the blue spot no, I'll, I'll still say shallow because i saw that one on that one fit i called you right after yep if yep. you have the right areas i would say <laughs> i like to stay right outside the spawning flats yep you know six eight feet of water yeah because they're not gonna go less. swimming half across the lake to go recover they're just gonna move just outside mm -hmm. and find a good feeding especially lane like chill like i find it, it it definitely depends if your lake's really busy because at this point now, everybody's putting their docks in. Yep. Everybody's got their boats going. And they're annoying the hell out of the bass fishermen. <laughs> I know that's a problem around here with the, with the few lakes that we have. You know, that are yeah, you're, heavily populated. Your tin boat spot must be a nightmare. Like, I, I, fi I fish it from 5 a.m. to 10, 30, 11 Is that in the morning. Slow? And then, yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah, then, dude, it's in. It's, it's and then I leave. Man. And then, I'll, you know, if I were to fish it in the afternoon, it would be a Wednesday afternoon. Yep. You know, after work, three o'clock till dark. Yeah, you can't be out there on a midday Saturday because you awesome. just yeah, you can't you get blown off the lake. <laughs> You'll catch big ones if you're willing to put up with it. Yeah, you get run But over it's not. If you feel like getting easy. a crop upside your head. Yeah. So that depends too. Yeah. How noisy the water is. Lake noise is a big factor that time of year. Yeah, it is. So I'll I'll do the same thing as you. I mean, we're all pretty. I mean, we all fish the same areas. We all have the same patterns and stuff. Um. The only difference is that's when I really start to let that shaky head shine. Like, that's when mm -hmm. I really, like, I see that. finesse is, it's like, shaky head comes out, and it's, like, one of my immediate follows up. I will go from, depending on the conditions, either spinner bait or chatter bait or that swim bait still is going to work really great, jig, whatever. Like, I, I have whatever my preferred heavy weight setup is, shaky head right behind me. Because it's like it's big, but it's still subtle. Because I'll throw like a seven-inch trick worm on the back of that. Yeah, I mean now now's the time to start throwing senkos. Yep. You know, I know nobody likes to throw them anymore, but <laughs> or like I like throwing a bubba shot, which is like basically a drop shot that's six inches off the bottom, heavy line senko. Yep. I tried Something that like once. That. Didn't work great for me, but I tried it once. 
Tokyo, Tokyo rig. I was just gonna say you got me in Tokyo rig this past year. I rode a few and I like them. That's fun. a good rig. They're, yeah. It's different. Catches big ones. It's different. It's a big weird metal thing. And you're just like, oh, if that's gonna just well, like the fish or not. But yeah, it, then the way I use them too, especially because you know after spawn everything's growing, the muck is getting mucky again, and mm-hmm. you want you know your Texas rig's falling into that muck. He's gonna hit you. He's Switch to a Tokyo me. rig, man, and just dance that thing above your muck, and you'll get. You'll that's get a good a idea. Bit. I didn't even think of that. Uh, I was just almost, I was pretty much trying to just use it as like a punching rig. Well, it works for that too, yeah. It worked pretty good. When the muck gets mucky, mucky mucky, and your jig doesn't want to get above it, that's when I'll go to a five inch trailer. Because mm-hmm. my jig will get disappeared, but those legs will just oh, stick yeah. up. So you shake it around, all you see is these little legs sticking out. Yeah, <laughs> dancing like, around what the it. fuck are you? And it looks <laughs> stupid when you throw it on the back of a jig. You know, again, it's a five inch freaking j- um, craw trailer. What is that? The net bait pack of craw. Um, but my god, like. That stupid kettle pond we were talking about earlier, um, with the the channel that goes all the way down the back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you know how the bottom of that is. It, yeah. it is mucky. Yeah. Oh, and that's where mucky. these come in. Yeah. Because even on a jig, like I get the presentation on the fall, and then it kind of gets lost. But all you see is these two little legs sticking up, and they, it works well. Um. But that's the only time I'll. I'll that was good. That's the only combo I'll work on a jig in those conditions. Like I'll that. start throwing drop shots at that point in time too. I need to. Get I love drop shotting for largies. I've only done it a few times and. I mean, well, it's worked out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. There was that day at the pond in which we not speak where I was like, we were talking about it. I was like, you know, we should, we should really try drop shotting for largies more often. it's the best technique and out there. I just got the magic flicks and the perch, and I was like, in, we were talking, he's like, I was like, you want to try like it? He's like, yeah, I'll white, try the it. The pearl? Mm-hmm. Yeah, deadly. So he throws it on, and he caught the only two fish. We yeah. were out there for like two hours. That's all we had for time, but he catched the only two fish on the freaking drop and they were shot. Both and they like, were like three and a half. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was like a five minute window where he was like, yeah, I kind of like that. I had about a 30 <laughs> second window up on Winnie, though. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. <laughs> that was cool. So, so there you go. Start throwing drop shots. It too. works. And that was shallow, too. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Like super shallow. Really? I like mean, I, I mean, that's one of my favorite bed fishing baits now, too, is the drop. And then I. Especially for large It's on like my deck time. from then. For the rest of the year, mm-hmm. doesn't matter what I'm fishing, small as large as I have a drop shot ready to go. I do bulk it up for large mouth fishing. To I always bring a drop shot when I go. Mm-hmm. I always have it tied up. There's a oh, it's on the floor over there. It's literally drop shot slash shaky, and that's as soon as we get like 60 ish degree. Well, not even a little earlier than that. That stays in the boat the rest of the year until it gets back down to like 50 again. Uh, it it's should there. be on the floor beside you. Oh. No, I see it. It's up I feel there. Like it's the guys watching right know what we're talking about here. Probably. Yeah. Um, this is a good one for you. Probably Lisa right. wants to know. Can you explain the Tokyo rig? Because you're well versed in that. Uh, so a Tokyo rig's basically a Texas rig, but instead of the weight being at the hook, there's a three-inch wire, there's and one you up hang there. your barrel weight off of that. So Th- there's nothing on your it. weight is down two to three inches under your bait. So you're floating your bait. The weight is down below, and you're floating your bait above it. Look underneath the spinner bait. Oh, here it is. As I say, I'm positive I left one up there. Ha! <laughs> um, wait, put that down low. Let him take right. that off first. Oh. <laughs> Pull that bait off of there. Hey, I couldn't the remember one. what I left on there. That's the one, I that's use the one we're not sharing with people. That's the one I use too. <laughs> so this is a Tokyo rig with it with an extremely long. So like the Bubba shot thing I was telling you about would be more of a length like this. A traditional Tokyo rig's about that long, and so it'll float your. You may have Eight. to hold that a little closer because I can't actually I can't even see that on the friggin'. There I am. No, that's good. I can see. So that. anyway, that's what a Tokyo rig. So your weight would be down here, and it floats your bait. Just so you, this will sink into the muck, and you can still pop your bait and fish annihilate it. Yeah. Some people is that homemade? Uh, that's from Lead Free Bass Jigs. Out of uh, nice Massachusetts. Length. That's nice. Yep. So like the Bubba shot I was talking about, which is a great bed fishing bait. You put a weight down here, and you can hang a whole Senko off this sucker and drop it in a bed and just jiggle this and that sand goes bouncing and they can't having the wire kind of yep. threw me off though when i first started using it because i was like that's going to be seen they're going to see it they're going to see it but when i, I took like, when i tie a bubba shot i, I, I use I'm line <laughs> you what i use line for a bubba shot so i wouldn't use this oh okay i would treat it as a normal drop yep and i would tie up you know a, a leader oh, okay I like but it. with a tokyo it's smaller and you don't it's not as right cumbersome yep. Goodman, Texas rig drop shot with a jumbo robo worm in the sparse grass and wood. Mm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I buy it. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. Works. Um, all right. We covered the tail end of 
All right, well, I just said it. The uh, bluegill spawn. That's like, it, it, it's kind of a small-ish window, but it's a very important window. Because it's like feed bag times 10 again. Before everything kind of like drops, maybe not necessarily off a cliff, but there's like a distinct like, yeah, okay, bite has definitely gotten more difficult. Yeah. What are your go-to baits? When the bite dies? No, when, when they're like, when the bluegill spawn is on. Oh, and they're just hammering everything? Yeah, because the bath is still up there. Like, that's that's one of my favorite times. It's usually for New Hampshire, right around Father's Day. Because my dad and I, it's Father's Day. We always yeah. go out fishing on Father's Day, and that's like... Yeah, I don't know when that is. Temp? Water temp? Um, <laughs> Actually, at that point, you're getting like mid to upper 70s, I think, is when the bluegill spawn. Chatterbait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jig, chatterbait. Frog. Frog. Swim jig. I really haven't had much luck on oh, swim dude, jig. This because has been I'm my thing for like six years now. I know now. it has, but I, I tried <laughs> it this blue past go, year. I did get hit a pattern few. frog. Did oh. get oh frog too, yeah. yeah. Frog spooks. Yep. I'm waiting for Oh, top water, yeah. Top water. Top Early water. morning. Oh, yeah. Top water, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Even the rat. But like uh, you know, I find rabbit. a lot of times, especially during the midday, when the bluegills are spawning and that's what they're eating, you know, oh, primarily, it's it's hard to catch them. Straight up, just hard to catch. Yep. But that whopper plopper too, that's like you always throw this thing. Yeah, they love it. Especially like when like that post spawn through the bluegill spawn. Largies love that. Oh yeah. And especially if you can get Any it around. Any kind of topwaters, like, Irish poop. Yep. Lights out. Dude. Especially if you can get it around clouds of bait fish or um, mm. uh, clouds of fry, like they just they go crazy, and it's awesome. It's great. And a senko. And the Sanko. Don't so forget, I got about, my, <laughs> forget about the Sankos. I'm doing it's like, He's got a lot of shit to talk about. Dude. <laughs> if you fish tournaments and you're not throwing a Senko here and there, you're crazy. Yeah, you have to. It's like, regardless of what you think about it, it puts fish in the boat. Mm -hmm. You have to be throwing it. At that point, I throw a baby white frog. But that's just me. That's how I caught my PB. Stupid Sanko. After the last three years of playing all these big baits and trying all these different things in the spring, and then I oh, see it. Right. And um, I threw everything else I had in the boat, and I forgot I had these Neko Rig Senko on there. And I was like, well, what the hell, I'll try it. It was like second cast with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. But whatever, it works. What's your color? Oh, dude, I throw a bunch of everything. Did I leave any out? Um, I, have a, I have like a green. I have a one color. I, yeah, well, No, I didn't I have, have any that out. one with the little, like the tail is a little off. I don't. Yeah. I've done some laminates, and I like them. Black of the blue flake. And like a dark green with a black flake. That's like, and then I have yeah. a bunch of offshoots from those, but those two catch pretty much everything I need. Yeah, I'm a black and blue laminate Yamo Senko. Yeah, that's it. That's the only one you'll find in my boat for largies. Yeah, yeah. Clear water, dark water doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. catches, yeah, straight catches it. It's crazy how well it works like in clear water. So, the what? The robo worms. I can use those a lot. Oh, a that lot would be. Stuff too. In that shaky, the the one tote that's like sitting out weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're in there. Should be easy enough to find. Those were great. That was that um, green pumpkin and chartreuse. Yeah, but those were the. I don't know. Oh, you do have them right there. Yeah. Yeah, those are awesome. These ones right here. They got the brown and they got the chartreuse and a little black stripe in between them. Me and you went out that day. Yep. Can, you, you, can you? To the can you spot. throw them as far as the senko though? I don't oh, think you no, can. No, not those. No, no, not even close. Yeah. But I was using. I used these on a shaky head. Right, yes. and yeah. And you can bomb those things. Or drop shot. Or drop shot. Right? Yeah. Right. And, yeah, that's what they were designed to do. Anyway. But we went out that day with those on the pike spot. We killed it. Swim bait scrutiny, absolutely. Bluegill spawn equals bluegill swim bait. Yep. It's, it kills it. Um, what else we got? Cause that, that, Unless you're fishing a tournament. Right. Because, you know, I can't do that. Nope. Um, I can't hedge my bets on catching one or two nice ones. Well, That's when I the, say swim bait, well, I, I'm still talking about this thing. <laughs> but oh, right. he, I'm not talking about yeah, swim not. bait. No. Although, <laughs> is there... Oh, where is that other freaking case? I had, like, a bunch of bigger swim baits that I wanted to show that... But they're not huge. That right there, large. No, 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 no. It's one of those smaller ones. Square bill. Oh, um, red, uh, black handle with the red strip. It's in the middle. No, look down. Bottom shelf. No, no, no. Yeah. Right there. That one. There's a couple of bluegill baits I got in there specifically for that window. And I got them last year after the bluegill spot. I forget. I can't remember the guy's name. He was on... Um, oh, that's sick. Yeah, that's, that's nice. not that's the spot. case. Let's Damn not it. put this out there. No, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, what the hell did I do with it? 
But I, I got these specifically for that postmon button. That thing is sweet. It's a little wake bait. Also, I'll add, we're overthinking the hell out of all of this. Oh, yeah. Just get out there and go fishing. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I see. It's underneath where it says paddle swim. It's that, that container. Time I just want to show those off because I don't know if I showed these to you. They're like in between, you know, what I consider like a traditional swim jig swim bait and what? Swim bait scrutiny fishes. The swim baits. No, no, yeah. no. The, uh, the thin case. It's the only downside to a swim bait. You got to label these I know. I put it in backwards. I can't, I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see either. Oh, yeah, that's nice. So that one is another one. Dude, this thing. Oh, um, these are all nice. Hold yeah, on. Hold the stuff. show. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, burrito. That's yeah, it. This is the one I'd be throwing, right? Here. Yep. It's like... So I just got that one. Um, MDC. That's nice. Who's that? Mass? And then I got this. That's a burrito that's gill. Cool. And this thing is money, dude. Like, it sits on the bottom oh, yeah. like that. You can bounce it around the lot rocks, and it's just dude, like, and it's like, feel that. That will drive a bedding largemouth absolutely nuts, too. If you drop something like this right in their bed, they dude, it falls so down. will drill it. Perfect. Like, you need to see this thing. When it, it falls, like, perfect, nose down, and it's like a jig. It just yeah, stands there. Or like it's eating eggs out of a bed. Right. Not to revert back. Yes. Yeah. So we got to go forward in the season. Yeah. But, yeah, but so, I'm... like, I, I've got, like, those in between or bluegills, yeah. swim baits, yeah, specifically nice. for that window. That day when I went to the canal and got those six over four. Didn't say where it was. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. And you were just I was watching them chase bluegills from one side to the other in about a half a second. Yeah. Which is they're they've gone to the other side and they're the That was something was I was gonna exploring. talk about for ice out, but we won't get into it. But that pond is insane. Yeah. That place? Yeah. Alright, so now we're into the deep summer pattern. <laughs> We're, we're, we're actually doing pretty good on time. It's only 9.20, so I think we can get through in the next, like, 20-ish minutes. And then we can talk, uh, we'll wrap it up talking a little bit more. Favorite techniques, maybe some nuances that we do for what we're willing to share. Again, not looking for anybody's secret juice. Uh, and then we can talk about different ponds and how we tackle them differently because largemouth are so diverse. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, like, dead of summer, hotter than hell, water, you know, and these like, kettle ponds are, like, low, mid-80s. What are you throwing? I'll start with you, Andrew. Low mid eighties. Yeah, like I mean, hot, 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 hot. But that where we typically like, okay, we this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go back at night. <laughs> I'm punching. Well, is, is throwing top water in the shade. Frog in the shade. Or anywhere where there's any little inlet to get back behind the trees. In that shady area where the where the water meets the shore, but it's still under overhanging trees and there's grass, any little area where there looks like it's spread apart, toss a frog in there like it back. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I would say um, I like doing like that. watch the wind. If you have like three oh, the wind days area. straight of like a pounding wind into a certain bank of a lake that you're going to fish, uh, the fish will be there. Yep. Oh, so. Yeah. Dead of summer, early morning especially. Like if the wind's been pounding, pull up on those banks. The bait's there, the fish are there. Get your fish in. The, I'm talking tournaments. Um, <laughs> get your fish in your live well right away in the morning on those windblown banks. Um, they'll go right up shallow at night, and if you get there first thing, you'll you'll catch a limit quick. And then to add to what you were saying, like if when the sun gets high and the main lake's super windy and you're just getting beat up, find those backwater shaded areas and mm -hmm. you will find largemouth tucked in a foot of water. They're just looking for shade. Mm -hmm. And Like me and you went that day. We won two tournaments doing that. Remember we took my boat yeah, and we uh, stuck yeah. into that? Was it my boat? Me and Lauren won one on Conway Lake doing that. Yep. You fish the windy edges. We put a limit in the boat and then we went culling. The, you know, died down middle of the day. I'm like, it was so hot. It was like 90. Yeah. And it was like, we need to find shade. We pulled into shade, started flipping uh, timber, but it was two feet deep, but we couldn't see it. Yeah. Because it was dark, dingy, shady. And yeah, we called, <laughs> called, 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 and called. And it was sick. Like yeah. that day, that we, I don't know if it was on your boat or it was, or it was my boat, but when we went up into that really shallow, weedy area and there was that little channel. Up, yep. And we both tossed in there and both got smoked. Shade's by the, key. But, but at the same hour. time, Deep, deep main lake edges, man. Like, yeah, right. They'll go deep Still to find shade thing. and cool if water. If you got, too. if you got boulders that are, if you got any structure that's deep on that, on that bank, yeah, they're, they're gonna be held up there. Especially when it's super hot, and they want to get underneath. They will literally get underneath those boulders if they can, to get away from that sun. 
and just hang out. Oh, can Ooh, I have that shit. power bait bag, please? So I'll do all the exact same stuff as you guys, and then this is where Texas rig really comes into play for me. I'll throw a 7 to 10 inch worm, either on a Carolina rig or just a Texas rig, but a light bullet weight. And that's where I like to fish deeper grass, deeper rock piles, individual boulders that are like, you know, whether it be deep or at least moderately deep, like half, like the, the pond we always go to. Um, there's a couple of really nice rocks, like just individual boulders where the average depth in that lake is what? 13, 14 feet maybe on the high side. Mm -hmm. And these rocks are in like six to eight feet. So like they're almost in the middle of the average depth range of this place and like those are great for me too and yeah senko again sometimes shaky head jig um but i'll play around my jig a little bit and i'll get something um a lot more violent but texas rigging big worms or carolina rigging like middle of summer that that's when those really start to shine for yeah me. slow way the hell down jelly worm 10 inch power bait worm yep and that's like just drag it up real slow a couple feet off the bottom and then let it fall down and it's somewhere in the middle of that is generally where i'm getting my bites so right after it comes back down go to lift it back up again and it's just heavy as hell <laughs> i yeah. caught um chris raptor's friend that keeps telling us about that pond and i finally went there in the rain yes. i forget where you were nothing for hours because a cold front came in there was pouring rain i went back i found this one big rock off of the rock pile he kept telling me about because my 360 and I went to that seven inch power, uh, seven inch ribbon worm on a, I think it was right. twenty eight ounce that, bullet weight like, at five and a quarter. Yeah, five, 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 five pounds, five ounces, two exactly two pounds lighter than my PB I caught a few weeks later, and they were the exact same length. They're both twenty two inches on the dot. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, I couldn't believe it. But yeah, that's that's when like everything else you guys said, plus some top water. But like that's when my Texas rig game really comes out, and I'll throw. Uh, like a seven foot medium rod with 12 pound straight floral. Um, seven foot medium, it's got enough backbone that I can still kind of horse them out. Maybe not easily, but well enough. But the tip is still supp supple enough that even if I went down to like a six inch T rig worm with a super lightweight bullet weight, I can still cast it without like killing myself. I get a good distance out of it. Too. I like going, I'm braid to floral almost 100%. Yeah, you've been now. like that for a while though. Yeah. So, I can't do the braid on a. I don't like braid on a, on a bait caster. I'm I getting better with it now that I've learned to tie the right knot. I know a lot of people. <laughs> that too. Did you You're tell me other reels just died? Yeah, my You're cheap my reels, reels man. Blew up. He's a reel died again on Sunday. His <laughs> other <So laughs> Abu. Well, like <laughs> I, I used to go straight floor. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. will for a jerk bait and stuff like that. Yeah. But if I'm if I'm casting a T rig, pitching a jig, anything like that, I'm going braid to floro leader now. I mean, it saves me a lot of money on just floro. Yep. I just tie a new leader on it once a week. And something I need to get more in the habit of because, you know what it was? I didn't have a knot that I was super confident in before, so I did double uni, mm -hmm. and that hurts like hell in a casting reel. Yeah. It's a bulky knot. It, it's broad, so yeah, when you no, I get whip it. a cast, it hurts. Yeah, I, I tie the FG knot. Um, it takes some time to learn and get confidence with, for sure. Yeah. But it's the knot to go with, I, I think. Will told me that. And I did it. It's and a like, pain in the butt. Yeah, he tried showing. But me once you get good, it's, it's easier. It's by like him. Fifteen minutes of freaking time. <laughs> <laughs> so we were fishing a, a tournament together on Great East, and my my leader. I think I broke my leader off like the fifth or sixth time. He's like, "Do you want me to show you?" I'm like, "All right, yes, please." And I sat down. He's like, "Now I'm probably gonna lose you, but try and follow along." And I'm thirty seconds in. I'm like, "Buddy, I have no clue what you did." <laughs> and he's like, "It's all right. I'll tie it for you again if you need it." It's a good knot. But yeah. yeah. It you know it's something you want to practice here at this table. Right. So John. Um, because he will told us the same thing and i told john i was like yeah will tried to teach me and like yeah. i kind of got it but like i still didn't quite grasp it so john was looking into it and he found a video that he was like this explains it really well so coupled the video with what will taught me and like i tied it mint first time yeah and i went retile my stuff for that weekend and next weekend and then the third weekend I, like complete mental retard block yeah. like i couldn't <laughs> I couldn't tie it. They just blow apart if you don't tie them. Right? They so, don't. Yeah, you need to be. Yeah, it's one of those knots, man. Yeah. So then I. Went, I don't like to tie them on the spot in my boat. No. <laughs> like that's happening in the yard. Right. Under the shade, you know, just like taking your time. Make and that, sure you got a good knot. Make sure right. You got a good beard. <laughs> yeah. It takes a while, especially when you're doing 10, 15 rods, man. Right. That's the thing. So then I went to the Alberto, and I loved it. 
I haven't. Good knot. I think I've broke off once, maybe twice at the knot, at leader knot now. Everything else, regardless of what I'm throwing for pound test, has broken at the hook since I switched. To that. Yeah, I will say the FG knot sucks with very like small diameter uh, braid to floral. Yeah. Like, so you drop shot rods, you gotta be careful with it. I've never really eight broken pound, off my knot before. Eight pound braid to six pound fluoro can yeah. be tricky. I don't remember what you tie for a leader knot. No idea. Okay, <laughs> that's good to know. I'm not. It's not a secret. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> um, oh, Lisa, what top water any time of the day when the water temp is high? Ah, uh, condition specific. I mean, yes, yeah, but, but also I'm not no. going to go out at noon when it's 90 degrees and go through a top water. I'm just not going to do it because they're not going to be hit top water unless you're actually yeah. in, like, unless you're in an area where there's a lot of shade and, like, you can actually get yeah, I mean, in I've tucked seen, in areas. We get into the smallmouth thing, but this what? is not about that. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, this yeah, is not like, a smallmouth thing. <laughs> largies, I wouldn't. Yeah, I'll agree with you. <laughs> yeah. It's a tougher way to fish in the middle of the day on a hot day. First thing in the morning, though. Like, I love oh, throwing yeah. the big spro rat, that big purple son of a bitch. First thing man. in the morning. Yeah, the size 50 one, the big, big? Yeah. Oh, the big yeah, one. The only yeah, thing I'd I'd I won't have a small one. That's stupid. I'd just throw it because I was spook at that. They need to make a bigger one. They need to make, like, a 150. <laughs> you get some handmade ones. <laughs> well, there's no tail on this one. So mine. No, that's no, not, that's mine, not even mine the big broke. one. The purple's the color I like. That's the big one. Do they make a, That's the 50. That's not the big one. That's the 50. They make a bigger one? Yeah. Oh, I ain't it. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, I have one that's way bigger than this. Are you sure? Or you just haven't seen it in six months? No, it's bigger than that. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> All right. More like the S wave. So yep, about an hour and a half in. Andrew's being inappropriate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, maybe that's it. I don't know. Frogs all summer. Come on, Andrew. So much hate. <laughs> Make a bass out of it. Hey, look at that mouse. Sorry. Lost Andrew. your video stream. Here. Frogs all summer. Buddy. What happened? You unmuted it. Click. Oh, just go shut your. Oh, there it is. Mute that. Where is it? Click. Cut. This guy. <laughs> Ruins everything. Can't bring him everywhere. No. Nope. Um. Can't bring anywhere, not everywhere. <laughs> all right, let's wrap it up. Uh, let's let's just touch upon it really quick and, let, and let's just go rapidly. So now we we've covered deep water. Uh, well not deep water. Like midsummer, largemouth, hot water. Now we're on the downswing. And things are getting colder, and things are starting to get back into like that that fall bite. Um, I don't want to go, you know, like everything we've done so far has been like narrow window, narrow window, narrow window. Now let's kind of broaden it up a little bit. Now we're past summer, water temps are on the fall, like that fall bite before really cold water. What do you guys like to do, and where you're looking? Because for me, that's when top water like really starts to kind of go off again, but like more consistently. Um, and then the moving bait bite gets really, really good again. Hey, they throw a bunch of things in that window. When the fall feed bag's on, it's kind of hard to screw it up. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much just throw jerk bait and jig at that point because I know they're going to bite them. Yeah, or crank. Or crank, 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 bait. crank bait, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely crank bait. Yeah, this I start reverting spring, though, back to like ice out techniques. I like to throw my jig. Lipless crank. And a, and a crank bait, yeah. Rattle trap, yep. something like that. Yo-yo mm -hmm. it, but you can also like kind of work it fast. It's more like, but man, it's or we didn't even talk about silver buddies because that's more of a silver, whatever we want to call them, blade baits. Yeah, but they work for largies too. They do, but I can't speak confidently to them because I've only done it a few times. Um, that's much more of a small mouth thing for me for my go-to. Yes, but yeah, like lipless, but a lip, like yeah, cold water. Spring. Yo yo it, reel down to where it, follow it down. Yo yo it up, real slow. But now in the fall, I'm like. Burn it, twitch, burn it, twitch, kill it, yo-yo it, burn it, twitch. Like, you can fish it a lot faster, and it works really well. Uh, and you just kind of play with the cadence to make it work. Um, yeah, that day me and Kristen were out on, yeah. on, that, on that place. Yep. And we came around. We didn't get a bite. We were out there for five hours, not a single bite. As soon as we get to this one flat where we're just like, all right, well, I'm just going to throw a drip bait for the rest of the time that we're here. Boom, six-pounder. <laughs> And that after that, it was just fish after fish after fish after fish, and they're all up on that, all up on the flat. And that was in the fall. Yeah. That was, oh man, that was so much fun. I do need to throw jerk bait more often. Because I, well, I mean, I only, <laughs> it's the one bait that was always such a thorn in my side for so many years. I just told him I want a gold one. <laughs> and I finally got, like, confident in it last two years. But, like, pre spawn. <laughs> and into the spawn. I'm getting there. But I, I do need to get better with it in the fall. 
Oh, we'll have that opportunity at... We'll go Candlewood in the spring, then Champlain in the, in the spring, and Champlain in the fall. It makes for a long day trip, but I want to do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Champlain in May is very fun. That's what I've heard. Yeah. I want to go up there and I want to punch Matt's. Dude, that yeah. was insane. And that's not bad because it's only a three-hour ride. Yeah, it's not bad Have at you all. done that up there? Like, I actually punch high. grass mats? No, I haven't fished down there. Oh, all right. I've so when we go, you side. get to follow. Is it, so it's like with one or two stops, I think it took me like three hours and 15 minutes to get to the Vermont side of Ty. And we weren't too far from there. So no, it's not I'll just like... just get an Airbnb. Maybe we can do it. They, they never say that. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to coordinate with DJ because if we go on the weekend of his turn, he'll be pissed. <laughs> But, yeah, like, that was, he kept telling me, he's like, man, come up here, help me figure out the smallmouth spot. Uh, and then, depending on that goes, we'll go punch mats. And I was like, yeah. okay. And that was the first time I've ever done it. I mean, mind-blowing. Literally throwing a two-ounce weight 30, 40 feet in the air, and it's still not getting through. Yeah, it's crazy. Mind-blowing. But when it did, <laughs> thunk. <laughs> yeah. It's just, oh, my God. Even the one-pounders was like. Every one of them felt like a tank because they just hit it so hard. I really wish I could have gone with you. I don't even know what the hell I was doing. You were supposed to be doing something else and you slept in. And I remember you finally picked up your phone when I was already like an hour into Vermont. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm not turning around. <laughs> you can drive your ass up here if you want. <laughs> That's also deer season for me, so. Yeah. I think I might have been hunting that day. I think you were supposed well, It's maybe. really hard to balance deer season and fall fish. You've yelled at yeah. me a few times because of it. Yeah, dude, you gotta be in the woods. You have to be in the tree. Yeah, but the fucking fish are pointing. <laughs> dude, you're not gonna get a deer this year. And guess what happened? I didn't get a deer because I was up catching yeah. fucking fish. Hammer time. <clears throat> Nine foot suspending jerkbait until bow season. Nine foot suspending jerkbait until bow season. Yep. I like it. New England bass ag jerkbaits all fall too. Jer- New England. And bass then shoot ag. a deer early so you can spend some September October mornings in in the boat again. Yep. And go. then wait till rut well. to get the big buck. So then, getting towards the end of the year, I'm going to reiterate what you just said. As the water continues to get colder, I'm just reverting back to everything we do at Ice Out. I'm mm-hmm. going back to my jig, back to my spider jig, back to the swim baits, and I'm just lightening it up um, in most cases and slowing way down. Pretty much hit the peak <clears throat> and go in reverse. Yep. The same <laughs> spot I talked about at the beginning where I catch all those six, seven pounders in the spring is exactly where I catch them in October. Yeah, and it, it's like... On a sunny day, they come... They're staging for the winter, yep. and they're getting colder. But that sun comes out, and they're still on that. They're in that three to six foot range in the sun, right on that steep bank, so they can get the hell down low if they have to. The weather changes; it gets colder. They're down deep. Yep. And when when it gets warm, like those like late October, early November, like kind of like Indian summer stretches, especially if we get like an influx of like heavy rain, really warm water. Like, they'll, they'll change drastically coming up and down. Like, one of my best days I ever had, you were talking about wind direction. And especially consistency day in, day out. Mm-hmm. And there's the pond at the inlet. And the wind had been blowing up there for oh, three yeah. straight days. And it was <laughs> the first week in November. And it was when a um, tropical storm came up. So we just got absolutely hammered by rain. But it was warm for end of October, early November. And... Uh, a bunch of trees down and um, I think you made a video about this. I did. Yeah. But there was we I, what did we get? Like two or three inches of rain from that it was one a lot. thing. And that whole inlet all of a sudden just got flooded with super warm water oh, flushing was... all this stuff into the lake. Plus the wind was blowing up into it. That was like go there. <laughs> that, that spot's amazing get... early too mm-hmm. when the wind's blowing down that way. Ooh yep. boy. Um when yeah, it, day, like polar opposite ends. Way. Depending on what, if the wind's blowing steady for a couple of days into one end or the other, they're hammering on either mm-hmm. end. It's I love that. I like that shoreline right before it cuts back into that back shoreline. Yep. But you're gonna tell the person that wins this little giveaway all your secrets when you take them to the pond? No, it's, it's actually <laughs> Sorry, funny because one of the things, um, one of the other things I'm trying to work on, and I've got most of it done, is we have. Um, you're familiar with Patreon. I'm sure everybody else is watching Patreon. Like, YouTube has their version of that, you know, where you can have subscribers pay per month and you get rewards and stuff. And one of the highest tier rewards we have is after two months of support, we'll take you fishing. And we'll take you anywhere with literally one exception. Mm-hmm. I know people know some of our honey holes because there's not... I mean, there's a lot of us, but there aren't that many of us that are, like, into it at this depth that watch all this kind of content. So... There's definitely people that recognize our ponds, but they also understand the importance of keeping their damn mouths shut. Mm-hmm. 
if you find, if you know that, if you happen to be one of these people that get that to come with us, I'm not going to take you to my honey hole and show you all of my secret spots and everything about it. I will, if you have, if that's what you ask for, I'm not going to acknowledge it. I'm just going to say, okay, well, based on the lay of this lake, I'm going to fish it as such. But I'm not going to take you to the juiciest spots that took me the last 10, 20 years to, to narrow down to that point. So there's a degree of how much we're willing to give up, um, which I really hope people would understand. It's a you're talking about a lifetime of effort to get down to that minutia yeah. of information. It's not something that anybody should be giving up. Period. Mm -hmm. End of discussion. Full stop. You got your. Everybody's got their own little, little things. Yeah. And, I mean, us. We don't really. We got our secrets, but we we share them. Right. Now, oh, different between stories. Friends, well, that's between friends. Right. Yeah, but if we got some schmuck off the street. <laughs> Get out of here. It's all relatable to everybody else's bodies of water, though. It is. Yep. Everything we're learning about our spots, you know, we go to Winnipesaukee and we find those same situations, we catch a personal best. Yep. So, it's all relatable. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, at this point, I think we've covered everything. Well, actually, no. The only thing we didn't cover really was, like, right before Ice Inn. And that one's kind of a tough one for me now because the last two years we've I, I put way more time in on smallmouth to end the year, so I can't even remember like what am I? Well, no, um, same deal. Steep banks, but big boulders for some reason are just like magic, and that's where the spider jig really comes back into play again. And I'm fishing he like insanely slow. Anything that'll retain any heat. Yeah. Yeah, they'll relate to. Timber will still be a key factor. Yep. There's that, my favorite pond, where on the whole eastern shore, it's like a 500-foot stretch of just these giant boulders in like 6 to 10 feet. And it just retains heat great. And then on the western side, it's all timber. And it's they're both just steep banks. The two steepest banks in that whole pond. If they're not hitting on the rocks, they're hitting on the timber. And vice versa. It's That's been my like confidence go-to lake because you can't really... He's the last person I saw to catch anything over four pounds. Where? Since I caught my six and a quarter. <clears throat> Remember that, that five pound, two ounce you caught at, um, I don't want to say the place out loud. Oh, okay, yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, with all the beaches. On eight in April. I mean, have you heard of anybody else catching <clears throat> bigs out of there like in the last 15 years? Used to be great. Mm -hmm. Like, consistently great. I mean, there's still a couple here and there. They gotta be still in there. Not like I mean, you can to. see the bottom pretty much the entire lake besides like a hundred foot stretch. Right now, with all the milfoil and everything in there. Unless he was blowing smoke up my ass, and he, I, I go back for it. Joe Cat. We were talking about that spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I, I went and I picked up a bunch of these. It's like, oh, where are you going? And I got these and um, the spider jigs, and then like green with uh, black and red flake. And I told him, he's like, oh my god, small up there, eat those things like candy. Yeah. And then we got talking you, about. You it. believe Joe? Yeah, and he and I was like, yeah. And it's good. I just like it's my confidence spot because I can just catch them. But yeah. I, I haven't got a big fish there in a while. He's like, yeah, you won't. Not since the ice fisherman came in there like 15 years ago. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and he, he just kind of went on this like tirade. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he does that. <laughs> well, he's seen it all, man. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's been at it for, what, 40, 50 years? Yeah. Yeah, at least. Tournament angling for and, over 30. And ponds do fluctuate. Oh, absolutely. You know, big do. fish come and go. Yep. I mean, a lot of the fish we're targeting are at the end of their life cycle. It's a hard environment up here. Big time. I mean, I've got, I caught those two sevens back to back years. Now it's, I haven't seen or heard of anybody catching anything over three pounds out of there. Yep. Yeah. The biggest bass I ever saw uh, showed up to a bed two years in a row now. I Obviously, she could have showed up before that multiple times, but I noticed her one year. Couldn't get her to bite. The next year I showed up and I got her to bite my jig once and I just screwed it up. Ugh. And uh, But she was she was nine, nine and a half pounds. Biggest oh, bass I've ever seen. Three insane. feet of water, same bed, two years in a row. Yep. And then the, the third consecutive year that I went looking for her, she was gone. And I knew that she probably didn't make it through the winter. And she was, I, I mean, <clears throat> the biggest bass I've ever seen. Yep. Now the biggest bass I've ever seen was at the canal, right on the corner, right over by your shop. Yeah, that's where I'm talking about too. Same one? I don't know if it's the same fish. It had to have been right in the corner. No, not down that far, though. No, it was, it was up like towards right, the, right at the, the end. second bridge. 
Now we'll talk about that offline. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's enough. <laughs> She's um, not alive anymore. No, man. definitely not. Definitely not. It's unfortunate. What else do we want to cover? Like, we've been really kind of broad, generally speaking, uh, from season to season, basically. But we really haven't talked about the difference between fishing big lakes, Winnipesaukee, like lakes region in general, super clear water, primarily sand and gravel versus all our kettle ponds. Because to me, those are two entirely different worlds. And a lot of that is also dictated by forage, like smelt and rock bass are so much more prominent up in the lakes region. Versus down here, it's bluegill, pumpkin seed, and perch. Oh, uh, and crappie. crappie. And shiner, golden shiners. Red fins. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, also, I mean, the big lakes have a ton of dead water. If you're looking to be productive, you need to get out there, spend time on it, and find your spots. I mean, still find a true 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water. Um, you know, I'm a yeah. huge advocate of Google scouting on maps. I like in uh, using Navionics on your computer before you go anywhere. Like, I always look for those shady, steep banks. Yep. I like to mark a bunch of them. I'll go on to my hummingbird. I'll add them before I even get there. Um, I'll find spots to, to go look and we're, you know, pre-fish things for tournaments especially. Um, watch the wind. And yeah, do your homework before you get out there. If you're going to a bigger lake, what I do, and I, what I would think to do <laughs> would just find something you, you can relate to by fishing your small ponds. Yeah, break it down. That's kind of what I mean by like finding some areas to key in on. Break it down. Treat the treat the big lake as little sections and kind of just break it down. Yep. Right. Yeah, because that's that was the hardest thing for me. Like when we got our first bass boat, like, oh great, we get to go to Lake Winnipesaukee for the first time, and you're like, holy crap, it's forty six thousand acres, and I'm used to fishing a hundred. Yeah. What the hell do I do? You know, every cove you fish on there is bigger than every pond. And it all looks fishing. amazing, yeah, yeah. and half of it's just dead water. There's right. Not and even a speck of bait. And yeah, yeah, and there's what? so many spots, even on Squam, which is a fraction of the size, and, and like, on my head, that any other pond down here, that's a fish. That's going to hold a fish 100% of the time, and up there, forget it. <laughs> it's dead water mm -hmm. every time, and that's the hardest thing for me to wrap my head around, because like, it's just not as a given when they have so much more water to spread out at, so... You have and to put in a lot more time. Pressure and lake noise too on those big lakes, man. Yep. You get a, a, a weekend, a couple weekends, heavy tournament on Squam. And you run up to Squaw Cove thinking you're going to pound the largest. Yeah, I don't go up there anymore. And they're that. nowhere to be found. <laughs> you know. Yeah. How, how deep will you fish when larges, when fur larges, when visibility is less than one foot? It's all relative to the pond. Yeah. Doesn't it's matter. It's still water temp, and it's still. It's yeah, I mean, the, I think the deepest largey I caught this past summer was 35 feet. Mine was plus 40. Was that Squam when you guys were practicing? It might have been. Yeah. I drop shotted it up when I thought I was going to catch a smallie. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. Yeah, I think that was that day. So if I pass by, right here, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> so, but again, um, I was up there with my buddy Ethan pre fishing for a tournament up on Squam, and uh, we were trying to locate smallies. Um, and I drop shot it up a five pounder yep. in 15 to 18 feet off, you know, off a of main point, mid lake, main lake, but you know, and it was surprising as hell just because of the situation we were fishing. We were yeah. finding smallies there and then all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That last spot they, where you're going with your dad, where was that the last trip or the second last trip up there? Doesn't matter. It was Doesn't one, of, it was one of the last after, two trips. We had a tournament after that. So. And uh, what? Up there. Oh, winning. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about the end of the year. Um, not not the drop shot day, super shallow. I thought you were talking about the end of the year up at Brownie Factory. When uh, TJ was fishing out beside us. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. We're, okay, we're yeah. Dragging, that's, that's what I was talking about, yeah. Dragging the heavy before, footballs, yeah. the little yep. swim baits, and 45, 50 feet of water. Smallmouth. Non-stop. Although TJ was fishing... The Miyagi on like a half ounce, the three quarter ounce thing. He had a lot. He had a and he was dude. He caught a seven and a half fishing that in like forty five feet of water. Yeah. And he's that guy's a hammer. Though. He yeah. Yeah. And yeah. he was it was one of his bad days. And he was saying to him, he's like, dude, I'm watching them. They're following my bait, but they just won't commit. 
He was like, oh, watch this. And he bombs his friggin' swim bait out, catch the four and a half. Like, from, <laughs> right, from, right his boat. from under his boat. <laughs> I was on my knees, too. I had the buddy <laughs> heater going. I was like, no! <laughs> oh, it was awesome. And we haven't even talked about the addition of live scope to our boats and stuff like that. But that's for another weekend, so I'm sure. Yeah, yeah that, that so that that's boat. actually one yeah, of the things that. that a lot of people yeah. asked about was, like, electronics in general. And that, just electronics alone, could be its own episode. Correct? Who's better at catching RGs? Either one of them better than me. Uh, that's not even a question, and I'm not even joking around. Like, I'm good. They're great. I don't know. We just... I think we're all pretty... Good. I think we're all pretty good at doing I that. would probably put you we, we, at the top because you're you're more consistent. Right. Beginning to I'll end. take that. Beginning right. to end. Yeah, because you take I mean, a break for hunting. And you're already but ahead. I, I didn't it's always... usually always ahead. Until... I've then. just been fishing maybe longer. Like, in the grand scheme of things, like tournament fishing and kind of grinding on absolutely. largies and just maybe it's certainly longer than you well you've been fishing yeah. before was you've alive, caught so. <laughs> i've caught up i've you, caught up um <laughs> we're all we're all hammers in our own right yeah, but um, you, you sean is an amazing angler that fishes too fast yeah and if he had learned to slow down years ago, he'd have a lot more bit. He'd have. We wouldn't even be doing this on this freaking live That's stream true. camera. We'd be yeah. on Char- Charlie Moore. So now that he's learning, <laughs> now that he's learning to slow down, Should watch out. Uh, yeah, like I, it's something I worked hard for, um, and like every year I thought I was getting better, but like, grand scheme of things, I was only getting like five seconds better at a time. Whereas this year, Bomo, yo, um, a minute. That place, like, really, yeah, I mean, we, we got the confidence, like, it just getting a couple of, like, straight, consistent days of, like, dude, letting it sit down there 30 seconds, not touching it. And even still, it's not slow enough. No. Yeah, but like, it's, I don't it's still fish 10 against times you better than... In the fall and on a smallie lake. No. Yeah, I've been putting a lot of time specifically into that, because that was something Unless I really want boat, to get better. I don't really want to fish against you. <laughs> I'll do it, because I know where he's going. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll see you over there in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, to your point, you, you know, you said you've been fishing longer than us. You're right. And to expand upon that, you've been fishing to this level of knowledge, or at least yeah. with this level of knowledge in mind for much longer. I didn't fish anything beyond a four inch friggin' Texas rig worm or lizard until I was 20, 19, mm. 20. And even then for like the next four or five years, all I knew was crankbaits and jigs. So like my 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 real true breakout didn't happen until I was 24. It was after I graduated college, 23 or 24 years old, and then that's like that three year window, well no longer than that, almost five year window between graduating college and my first kid being born it was like the first year or two of that was like oh yeah crankbaits and jigs and I really expanded on that and then I was like okay I'm still getting my ass kicked what else do I need to learn. And then there was like a three year window where I was like, I'm learning everything. And I went and bought rod and combo after rod and combo. I started with everything cheap from Walmart, you know, 30 dollar rod, 30 dollar reel. Um, and just, I was fishing three or four days a week. Like I was like, okay, there's like a thousand more things that I want to learn. So I've really only taken it to like this level for the last 10 years. Well, no, 12 years now. Well, we'll say roughly 12 years. I think like at this level, Whenever I started fishing with you, not like, long enough to have the big fish you have on your your bench over here. Thank I don't you. Want to talk about <laughs> Seven, eight I'm a years. Fast learner, eight, right? nine years actually. Well, you you came out with Josh and I a few times before Jared was born. Yeah, the one we used to be at the skate park every day. Yeah, yeah. So like nine or ten years ago. Yeah. So you're only a couple of years behind me. I've caught well over a hundred New Hampshire largemouth over six. So, That's fucking until insane. you get there. That's pretty insane. Yeah. And I lived on that lake. I was catching fi- I was catching big fish. And back yes, then, but I didn't I know. I bet you eighty of them came out of that one lake. Oh yeah, easily. Over a course of like fifteen years. Absolutely. So like that. And a couple seven. I think I missed maybe one of the biggest fish. I mean, definitely one of the biggest fish in my life. Out of that. Out of there. And when when at you, the top there's a big rock. Wherever you guys live, if you <laughs> find a place that houses these fish. Just grind it out. Fish it, man. Hard grind, grind it, it, grind it, grind it. Yep. Especially before the docks go in and after the docks come out. And you'll catch them. You'll straight catch them. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to go big, too, if you can stomach it. That's the thing we learned this last year. And, you know, like, people try to tell me. I'm like, yeah, 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 I get it. But I still had a hard time with that because I traditionally, like I said, until my 20s, I fished a freaking 4-inch rubber worm my whole life. So trying to change my perspective about what will 
any size bass eat. Like, dude, I was catching one pounders on this six inch bait, oh, yeah. left, right, and center. Oh, easily, yeah. So, yeah. well, like, you know, and for me personally, I, I catch more big fish over, you know, fish over five pounds on a jig than mm -hmm. most swim bait guys do. Yep. On their swim bait. 100%. Now, they might catch a seven pounder a couple times a summer, depending right. on where they live in New England. Yep. Once, maybe, if they live in New Hampshire. And, you know, I'm catching 20 fish over five pounds, 25 in any given summer. See, that's a couple thing for over me. six. That so you can catch, depending on what, you know, and that's my specialty. Some guys are way better at those swim baits and they, they, kill, they kill them. I get, jig is like, I, jig's just my go to because yeah. I have so much confidence in it. This is all I use because I know I've caught the biggest fish of my life multiple times on that fish, on that, yeah. on that bait. So. Oh, yeah. Jig and it's, spinner bait for me, but I'm nowhere near, like, that's the thing. Like, I pride myself in that. I rarely get skunked. Especially the last like five or six years, that's like always been my thing. Like I, I love the chess match, but as they have said a thousand times already, just tonight alone, I fish too fast, and I think that's my biggest Achilles heel. Why I don't catch many big fish? I have three fish in my entire life over six pounds. Yeah. That's it. Oh, it it is the reason. Yeah, and but for when I'm going for the big fish, spinnerbait Wham. and jig. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I had to be told it too. Once. Kick him while he's down. <laughs> down. He just caught a giant seven something. I know he did. That was a big fish. I was sick in the hospital. He's catching these mondos. Hey so. Kyle, did you hear? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm staying healthy now, and it's on. Yeah. I'm gonna get my ass kicked. He's coming on the revenge tour this year. <laughs> oh, I know I'm. Going and you should. Happy fish. to be doing it. <laughs> I know I'm going for all my fish this year. Which place? Where Travis caught all five of his. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot that all five of his keepers Did came off that it? one pond. Two of mine. No, came. I don't think he's ever I watched. think two of mine came from there. I only went the one. I gave up on it because I was like, I it can't. got hammered this winter. Yeah. I Did it? Got, oh bad. Damn. <sighs> Hopefully nobody took any. Yeah, that's what we're hoping to. Yeah, but um, damn, it's actually coming from ten o'clock. Is there anything else? You're ice fishing? Don't be an asshole. Don't kill all the yeah, big don't fish. Don't keep fish, dude. Right. Keep Understand. Panfish. Keep panfish. Panfish. We or all, we keep the squeakers. Fish. Keep like the one to two pound largemouth, man. Like understand that growth rate in New England, northern New England, is up on average. It's not specific, although it's something I want to work on this year. Uh, is to work with fishing game and, and like okay, I'm gonna send you a bunch of scales. Let me know, please. Of all my four plus pound bass. But average growth rate is about a half a pound a year. You keep a ten a five pound plus largemouth, that's a ten year old bass. Like that that's not easily replaced mm -hmm. at all. That gets immediately backfilled by a bunch of one pounders because mm -hmm. every acre of water only supports X number of poundage of fish. And the easiest way to backfill that is just a bunch of squeakers that survive from infantile to squeaker size. And then you just keep keeping bigger bass and you left with the, how many ponds do we have around us that went from like amazing quality fisheries to nothing but ones and twos. At least five or six within the last the 10 half years. Hour. Yeah. From here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that being said, like my home lake, which will not be named, yeah, obviously, <laughs> no, um, you can catch thirty to forty. We call them just rats, straight rats. They're like maybe three quarters of a pound. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you catch a seven and a half pounder. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. There's like nothing in between half the time. That's, so it's I'd never very really strange. call like a three out of there. No, you won't. It's the craziest thing. Right. I mean, you will, yeah, you will here and there. Years. If you fish it enough, you will. But it's it's either dink, 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 or giant. Yeah. The last and big fish so I strange. caught out of there, I think I I didn't have a scale, but best guess it was five and a half. But I went from catching six or seven, like three quarter to one pound fish, and then all of a sudden, boom, there he is, the five yep. and a half. <clears throat> Yeah, it's, it's, it's very strange. But, again, the bluegill population in that place is insane. Oh. Perch, there's so much forage and stuff, so. Yeah. The bigger the forage, the bigger the fish. The bigger the yeah. predatory fish. It's got, that lake just sets up good. It's got a big, deep basin, a bunch of shallow flats, rock fields, weeds. Points. Yeah, the diversity of what it offers for structure is mm -hmm. big. It's a little bit of everything. There's some submerged timber, you know. Right. Yep, there's everything. In there. And that really plays into the quality of the fish that's like uh you know pow pow yep same thing deep water pan fish weeds stumps rocks current and that that wind current, breaks points that points. current more than anything must be responsible for why there's so many bigger fish in there because it keeps it a little warmer just because it's keeping that main channel almost ice free almost all year long 
it's just a couple of degrees, and I think that's that's that slight difference that helps that place out. And there's some nice deep water in there, like 17, 18 feet. I found in some spots. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's all you need. Yep. Once you get into the teens, you got big fish. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh yeah. How was I gonna say? Yeah. So I just wrote in the chat, but now's the time for any more like specific questions and. Let me circle back to the 603 Bass Apparel really quick. Again, pre-orders end tomorrow night. So if you've been sitting on the fence about getting something, get it now while you can. There's a free 603 Bass decal that comes with every order. And at this point, every item that you buy enters you into a raffle. That we're pull a random winner and you're going to come fishing with Andrew and I for a day. Might be awesome for some people, probably a joke for others, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's something. I'm just trying to kind of help get the apparel out. I'm not really making any money on it. It's more just kind of like a, I wanted my own stuff. A couple people expressed interest. That's all it's about. I really wanted to make money. I would have gone through something like Teespring. And I would have picked like Hanes tagless tees and the thinnest, crappiest Hanes hoodie you could find. That's not what we're selling. It's not the same thing as what I'm wearing for Kyle's hoodie. Uh, it's a slightly different brand, but it's the heaviest it's weight hoodie nice. you can get. The t-shirt, same deal. What is the average? Like four ounces or something like that on t-shirts. We got the eight ounce. Maybe that's hoodies. Yeah. But whatever. Like, yeah. whatever the heaviest weight t-shirt is you can get. We got that. It's all quality stuff because I want to wear it. He wants to wear it. If you look good, you feel good, you fish good. Exactly. Period. That's why we make our own stuff. Yep. So. I want to share it with you guys. Yep. What are you looking for? Did you drop your shirt? You got that? You got this? Is that UV? Or is that just, like, the light duty? Yeah, I got it. Okay. You got these. Two. I mean, different. I, I, I like made these, like, a year ago. Yep. Um. Pretty sure they're UV. And 30, I think? SPF that would sound about right. It's probably on the tag, Andrew. If it's, I don't remember. It'll probably say it. But anyway, so, and anyone that's like shared that, shared the stream, anything, seriously, thank you. Like, I'll say it every single episode because it's absolutely true. Community support is huge for the growth of all this stuff. And we had a great night tonight. Like, I was watching numbers and we didn't quite hit the same peak as we did last week, but we sat over 50 viewers the majority of the night. That's pretty awesome for only the sixth episode in the stream um so seriously thank you uh all right questions oh hey mouse. andrew mouse Stop it. uh oh chris martin lumen fishing series hey buddy glad you for to stop what in produces fastest. Fast what forge produces fastest. Fast. Uh, it's mm. got to be bluegill right mm. crawfish Crappie. Yeah, I would say, yeah, crawfish, because that's more like protein pack, right? I mean, they're like little Mondo protein pack morsels. I mean, honestly, my opinion would be a, a, good, a healthy mix of both. Yeah. But when I'm catching them, they're biting crawfish. Big time. Oh, yep. yeah. So, it's got to be. Yeah, I well, mean, they're high in protein. The crawfish, they're crawfish super oily. They get pretty big, too. Like, down, yeah. Oh, yeah. I should. Get big. Did I ever show but you I think it's picture? A, I think it's a healthy mix of both. Yeah. yeah. Of, of, you know. They got a buffet down there. Fish and crawfish. Yeah. Perch. Frogs. Bluegills. Frogs. Squirrels. Mice. Squirrels. Squirrels. Are Ducks. Squirrels. <laughs> Squirrels is the answer. Ducks. There was, um, I've seen it. I've seen, I've seen baby ducks. That that tournament Squirrels. that DJ and I went I on throw a baby duck. Do you really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm getting. A, I'm going to get a squirrel from um, Colby. Uh, Live Free or Die Swim Base. Oh, they just started. So bad. He's got some chipmunks and he sent me a video of the swim. Like the knock on it is a little more subtle than the rat. Uh, it's just a slightly more compact size. I want it. It's like so a, it's, a pine squirrel, like a red squirrel, or a gray squirrel? Gray squirrel. Uh, uh, no, chip, sorry, a uh, chipmunk. Chip, chipmunk. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I want one. Yeah. I if you guys are watching. He's got, like, the natural color, and then he's doing, like, a bunch of just, like, wild colors. Like, he did, like, an army green one. They, dude, they the look so one. good. He did the Pikachu, but they're not selling those. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. I think I saw that. Um, they're cool. The hell was I about to say before we got sidetracked? What were we just talking about? Largemouth. Forage. Oh, <laughs> um, did I ever show you the picture from the tournament DJ and I won on the Connecticut River of the crawfish oh, yeah. that the guy pulled yeah. out of live well? It yeah. filled, I don't have small hands. It filled my hand. <laughs> that thing oh, was yeah. giant. There's a good reason why those fish there are so big. But river fish, especially in New Hampshire, again. Oh, I, I remember the first time I saw a rat, or not a rat, a mouse in the, in the bottom of the live well. Oh, yeah? I was like 18 years old. <laughs> I was like, that's not real. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it did. <laughs> Um, oh, my experience says perch, my brain thinks smelt. Well, for largemouth, smelt, I don't think come into play at all. Eh. And I think they'll eat perch, but I I still think bluegill and crappie 
There's a lot of our kettle ponds that have it all. Bluegill, crappie, perch. And I think... Uh, I want to say bluegill is their primary. I feel like crappie's blowing up in a lot of small ponds. They're going to eat them all. It's awesome. Bring it on. Recently. I love catching crappie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What's your favorite big bass bait color? Black and blue. From Black Goodman. Blue. Yeah. I'd have to second that. Triple that. Black and blue. It's really hard to beat it. It just works. Yeah. All year long. Doesn't matter what color. Where the hell did I... There was some forum, and I remember someone asking that question. Like, if you could only have one color for the rest of your life, what would it be? And I was like, black. Yeah. And everyone's like, you're I, stupid. I can literally <laughs> like, narrow it down to a bait. Yeah. A, a plastic. Black and blue and a specific plastic. Uh-huh. Yeah, but was it that one right there? Yeah, it's that one. Yep. <laughs> remain off camera. It's the same exact one that I would take. I would take that to the depths of hell with me. Yep. Yep. That's all I need. Three odd hook. Uh-huh. Three eighths ounce bullet weight and that bait, man. Hammer time. You're the same guy I talked to on Instagram, right? That you're up, like, in Vermont, just over the border, like, halfway up, kind of near Lebanon area, a little past it. Pretty sure that's you. All hail black and blue. <laughs> um, Black and blue is just a good, versatile color for stained water and clear water. It really is. It just, it's lights yeah. out the way to go if, especially if you don't know the water and you, you don't need to guess with black and blue yeah it's like an on button <laughs> trying to think if there's anything else that we wanted to cover for largemouth but I think we've covered everything you pretty specific coordinates so, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess at this point we'll, we'll, it's been two hours it's actually been a pretty good stream I don't want to like push it beyond like a natural flow of conversation so at this point last chance to get in any questions you want and you know if you have a ton of them we'll answer them uh but otherwise we'll start to kind of wrap this up uh kyle take a chance a moment again uh plug your instagram and everything uh one of the questions i saw earlier too was about your apparel mm -hmm. i know you were talking about getting that going at some point so have at it yeah so i'm slaunch beast crew um it started uh i mean i i say i am slaunch beast crew it's kind of greater than that it's all of us that like to catch big fish take a picture kiss them on the lips let them go um it also turned into uh, shooting deer and uh, everything else but um yes my apparel i was going to do a short run here recently and it just became out of hand with trying to collect money and blah 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 so i am setting up a shop like sean just did through our screen printer mint print works in nashville and Hampshire. it uh i'll post that on my slaunch beast group instagram facebook and twitter when that goes live yep i forgot you had the twitter I, I don't to use put that it. On there. I yeah, Twitter's Twitter. dead for fishing anyway. I do, I follow people that have like literally tens of thousands of followers, and they get like. And I have really likes. adorable <laughs> um, children, so they show up too. Yeah. <laughs> With the like most <laughs> amazing bright blue eyes too. Every yeah. time I see a picture of your youngest, I'm like, God, dude, her eyes are like insane. Yeah. <laughs> I can't look at it. They're gonna be hammers. <laughs> look out. Uh, oh, weirdest colored jig you'd throw. Yeah. That one, can you see that? I would say the. Uh, well, I can't. I can't see. It. I. It's on a bubble video. Bubblegum, baby. It got shown for about three seconds, and I can't show it. I can't see. It. Yeah, I don't have weird jig colors. I literally have two. Do you have one of those? I like black and blue, and I got one other, and that's it. Oh, this case, like a, a thirty-seven hundred case. I have two of them, black and blue, green and brown. That's it. I don't throw weird colors. I did try a purple one once, and it felt a thousand different ways from wrong, even though it shouldn't, because like. It, it, yeah, keep it basic. No problem, Brian. Yeah. Black and blue. Yeah. Um, you know, watermelon, green, brown works. Yep. Um, I like I like some redy, orangey looking stuff once in a while. Just yeah. starting to get a little more involved in that. The other the other color I actually started picking up last year because Peace Coast started making it was their dirt bag, just black and brown. So getting rid of the green and now halfway between my two favorite colors. Uh, and that actually worked really well. More so on the hustler than on a regular jig. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> I prefer but that's for small my mouth. personal style. Favorite style jig is a. I guess it's kind of like a casting pitching. I will pitch and cast with this jig. Um, it's a broader head, but is that still arky? casts. Oh yeah, that's yeah. It's like Arky style. It's like that yeah. kind of jack of all trades yeah. head yeah. style. I love that style. I don't. I don't swim jig as much as I should. So I, I like a casting, a casting jig, and a flipping jig. 
or in between like that one's a great all-around jig you can long bomb it across the flat and then you can also pitch it under timber under a dock and skip it anywhere yep. you want it still kind of stands a little bit too like a heavier head almost like a football not quite yeah, as I would consistent go, go football right. jig more for smallies and stuff yep. i still use football jig all the time my personal style stuff. though but that's just because that's what Gordy has his mold as. Yeah. He is making Arky head, though. Is he? He's going to be. Nice. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm football that. first and foremost, but that was up until like two years ago. Um, and actually, the guys on the Drag Custom Tackle team, they're like, what do you throw for jigs? So I was like, just football. And they're like, how the hell have you done so well with one jig your entire life? It's, it just works. See, and, I, I've never had <clears throat> consistent luck throwing it into timber that's the issue i was starting to have so Ball, then they were like try Arky. yeah yep. yeah and then i got yeah. and i was like oh wow okay <laughs> have one of everything yeah um oh that was the last question thank you ferris I mean, great I mean, appreciate we, it man we hit a ton of stuff we did oh, oh yeah. yeah fishing mode him and i talked a lot he throws purple spinner baits a lot um i have some baits. that makes sense because all blue guys have a little bit of purple on yeah well i mean if i'm throwing Something for bluegill. I already had that. This I is, mean, that's bluegill. This is my ghost. Well, it's a little lighter. I like a little bit darker one than this. This is just the one I had on hand. And I think my biggest on this exact bait, but it was a shade darker, it was a 6.8. I mean, yeah. And then I got that from Rocky Ledge. Yeah, that's nice. That looks good. Yeah, I, dude, I, I threw it like peanut butter, peanut butter jelly. I tried throwing it in the can. Oh, <laughs> Speaking of red. Oh, that, so that's a good pre-spawn early season. That's what I tried to throw <laughs> last year. And These guys know like, what this stuff is. I know, is. I know. Yeah. Trying to get into more of like oh, expanding on my colors, right? And getting the things that like aren't too far off what I'm comfortable with. But, you know, I even had a day where the spinnerbait uh, or chatterbait, the black and blue chatterbait was working great. I tried to pick up um, that purple spinnerbait. I couldn't get bit on it to save my life. I don't know if it was just a confidence thing or what. I'll, I'll, I'll get there eventually. But I, I try Where's to this guy there. with Donk Swampy? Yeah. It's the fucking if you live ever. in a state, you can use lead, man. These are Burks Baits jigs. I have, he has a thousand colors. I have mine all custom made to what I like to fish. Check them out if you're looking for a go-to jig, man. They're oh. awesome. 603 Wild. Gordy's in here. He's making Arkies now. Is that why you said it? I didn't see him in the chat. I didn't Where'd see you... him in the chat either. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Gordy. Yeah, I thought he was just yeah. tagged. Oh, yeah, he's yep. right there. There's right there. Nice. Yeah, um, yeah he, you know, we were talking about it a little while ago. He said he was making a long set. Yeah. Um, aluminum, fi yeah. Aluminum fishing series. Purple looks bluish deeper down. I have a video of someone threw like a bunch of different colors on like a steel rod and dropped it in semi clearish water down like 100 feet with a video camera tied just like a half a foot above all those colors. And you can see how they change as they go deeper and deeper. And I believe you're right. The purple starts to go more towards that as it goes deeper. Chartreuse and black are the only two that really didn't change on the way down. It's mm -hmm. kind of weird. Everything else like changed pretty drastically 30 feet and lower. But that's also pretty clear water. Um, well, those colors so, also use light to, to put your eyes go to lipless. So, yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> well, I'm sorry, what did you just say for jigs? What about them? No, sorry. Um, Kyle, what did you just say for jigs for non-lead? Oh, Burke's bait. Perfect. Okay, dude, you can get you can get anything you want custom made by an awesome dude. Great craftsmanship. They're awesome jigs. Nice. So I don't use them in New Hampshire anymore because of the law. That's where Beast Coast wink, comes wink. in. I got with Beast Coast <laughs> because he's got a wicked good selection of tungsten. Yeah. Um, lead free bass jigs out of Massachusetts is another guy. Um, I'm just trying to think of places that have online stores gordy i've got a few of his jigs um, gordy was making guy. he's making and listening <laughs> nice. um you know smaller guy um locally sourced or locally available stuff he makes good um non-lead jigs but if you're looking for stuff that you can easily find online beast, beast ghost, ghost for your tungsten mm -hmm. is killer and their prices as far as tungsten goes are incredibly hard to beat uh and then <clears throat> lead free bass jigs out of massachusetts also too, some yeah. really good stuff and he sells everything for jigs. And he'll be like, if you need something that's like, ah, okay, he's got that three quarter ounce football, but I really want this different size hook on it. He can, I'm pretty sure he can <laughs> accommodate a lot of unique requests. You can figure it out. Um, oh, okay. So Brendan, go to lipless, love red eye shads, but wondering what's yours. Lipless? It's literally, yeah, pretty much. The red eye? 
No. Wait. What are yeah, I'd go red. I thought you were saying just red. Red lip. Oh, I, I, brown, color and or um, make model. Lip, lipless crank? Yep. I like the six cents. <clears throat> That's just me. I, I haven't really tried a single guy. thing from them yet. I have. And I, I like That's them. That's that one? Yeah. Well, this is now lipless. They really they make a great top water, too, this dogma. Are you sure it's not a Guggen one? Mm-hmm. No, it was not a Guggen one. It's a fucking Guggen No, I do, I do like this. This thing looks really, really sick. I like that. Like, a lot. Um, That's for, the big one. There's another one yeah. that's an inch shorter, too. They're, they're, those are I great want, for smallies, but for largies. Oh, boy. I want big. this one. Yeah, they're nice. I like that color, yeah. too. You can pop them and walk them. Nice. Oh, yeah, because it's got that little... Yeah, they're, they're, they're nice. For me... <clears throat> Striking Red Eye Shad and the Bill Loose, like the original ones. Rattle Trap, man. Yep. That was a, chrome. Freaking lights the out. Chrome, chrome and black and red chrome. Yeah. Uh, the chrome I remember catching one. bass at like 10 <clears throat> years old with those things, man. I just remembered my tackle warehouse order didn't come today, and I was supposed to have baits in hand we could talk about. I bought a bunch of jerk baits and some lipless cranks specifically for our next return trip to the Cape because there's Alewife. Like, mm. Lots of them. So I got some oh, yeah. blue, blue chrome, um, blade baits, lipless cranks, jerk baits. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm kind of already covered on jerk baits of that color. I'm excited to use those jerk baits on that. Yeah. I'm going to save on gas and go ice fishing a couple more weeks. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> I'm going Saturday. What are you doing? I'm going Saturday. Me and Travis are going. Mike, oh god, oh, I don't talk about it all strength through the whole Stream. thing over him as well. <laughs> Dude, you're here right at the very end, Mike. Is that Julius Slacker? Caesar? Julius, whatever. Who what? Mike? Oh, yeah, Michael. Mike. How are you? He's our um, Good Canadian you? friend that lives in Kingston, Ontario. So just on the other side of the river from where we're fishing. He was our, our, one of our main points of contact while we're up there. Um, he's a good dude. He knows what he's doing. I grew up going up to Calaboogie, Ontario once a year. Uh, Black Donald Centennial Lake. Is that where your last trip was? Yeah, yeah that's what you say where you go every year. Yep. Yeah. We didn't go last year because of COVID. Yep. We went to Champlain. Um, we guys still had a good time, though. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, you guys hammered them. Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to going to Champlain for a long weekend. It's amazing. Um, it's going to be good. Too. All right. Um, the Kabaloogie Boogie. <laughs> Kalaboogie. Boogie. Cal- Kalaboogie. Yeah. <laughs> he knows. Yeah. Um, all right. That's going to wrap it up. People are dropping off at this point. We've covered pretty much everything for Largemouth. For those that have made it to the end, thank you for one. Two, check out everybody's social media. You can find it. Everybody's down in the video description below, except for, yeah, I yeah. think, his Twitter is the only thing I missed. It's okay. Um, if there's anything else you want us to elaborate on that, you know, again, if you're watching this after the fact, it's on the channel, just leave a comment and uh, I will get to it. If it's something that I'm not well versed in, I reach out to other people that are. I will find somebody that is an expert or damn near an expert at whatever your question is, and we'll get it answered. So that's a big thing. Otherwise, thank you all for tuning in. Greatly appreciate it. it was Buy fun. some shirts. Buy some shirts. <laughs> Apparel ends tomorrow night. You can fish with us two goons. Both companies, though. Both yeah. of us. Well, he's, he's coming up soon. Yeah. I'll fish with you for free. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to take he's undercutting me. <laughs> take you to the free ocean. Market. Crap. <laughs> Only if you buy his shirt, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you Kodu thank you Brian Aluminum Fishing Series Fishing Mode Mike the whole nine yards greatly appreciate it I'm going to wrap this up uh, again follow everybody thank you all we'll catch you next week same time same place I See have you, no idea what the hell we're going to talk next week I have like five different topics just kind of waiting in the wings for things to talk about Big Swim Baits is coming and that's going to be a special one because the two guys we're going to bring on uh, one of them can't do weeknights. He works weeknights. So it'll be like a special Saturday stream coming up here pretty soon, specifically on big baits. If there's anything else he wants to talk about for other topics, hit him up. Always looking for suggestions. I'm going to kill the stream. Thank you all again. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you later. See you next week.